On a sultry evening in July 1998, North Shore, Oahu, Hawaii became the backdrop for a tale that would echo through the community for years. The North Shore, renowned for its majestic beaches, towering waves, and vibrant marine life, has always been a magnet for locals and tourists seeking adventure. However, beneath the allure of crystal clear waters, a hidden danger lurked. The presence of sharks, especially at night when they are most active. Among those drawn to the thrill of the North Shore was 17-year-old Alex Johnson, a rebellious teenager with a knack for challenging the limits. With his carefree attitude and love for the sea, Alex often shrugged off the warnings about the dangers that swam beneath the waves. That night, fueled by the adrenaline rush of defying conventional wisdom and the persuasive cheers of his friends, Alex decided to go for a night swim, ignoring the well-known cautionary advice about shark-infested waters. Alex's friends, Michael Thompson and Sarah Lee, both 16, watched from the beach, their initial excitement turning into anxiety as the realization of the risk Alex was taking set in. The beach was deserted, the only sounds being the gentle lapping of waves and distant laughter from nearby homes, oblivious to the unfolding drama by the shoreline. As Alex plunged into the cool water, the moonlight cast a silvery glow, illuminating his path. The world seemed to stand still for a moment, with Alex feeling a surge of freedom and exhilaration. But this euphoria was short-lived. A chilling sensation gripped him within minutes as he felt something brush against his leg. Panic set in as he realized he was not alone in the water. Back on the shore, Michael and Sarah sensed something was wrong when they saw Alex frantically waving and shouting for help. The realization that their friend was in imminent danger from a possible shark encounter sent them into a frenzy. Michael, without hesitation, ran to the nearest house to call for help, while Sarah, paralyzed with fear, kept her eyes fixed on Alex, shouting words of encouragement. The local community, known for its tight-knit and supportive nature, sprang into action upon hearing of Alex's peril. Fishermen, surfers, and lifeguards, equipped with flashlights and rescue gear, converged on the beach, ready to embark on a desperate rescue mission. The atmosphere was tense, a mix of fear and determination hanging in the air as the rescue team coordinated their approach, knowing that time was of the essence. As the rescue operation commenced, the community held its breath, hoping for a miracle. Alex struggled to stay afloat, battling fatigue and fear, his mind racing with thoughts of his family and friends and the sheer unpredictability of nature he had underestimated. And the night once serene now echoed with the sounds of urgency and the collective effort of a community determined to save one of their own. The North Shore community responded to Alex's distress swiftly and coordinatedly. Still, the situation in the water was rapidly deteriorating. Now realizing the gravity of his decision, Alex felt a primal fear as the shadowy figure of a giant shark circled closer. His attempts to swim back to shore were hampered by the panic that gripped him each stroke seemingly futile against the vastness of the ocean and the impending threat. The rescue team, led by seasoned lifeguard Daniel Kimura, employed every bit of their training and local knowledge to approach Alex without provoking the shark further. Using jet skis and boats, they created a barrier between him and the shark, shining bright lights into the water to disorient the predator. The community on the shore, from the youngest children to the eldest residents, watched in silent prayer their hearts beating as one with the rescue effort. In a daring move, Daniel dove into the water, armed only with a rescue tube and his years of experience in dealing with marine creatures. His approach was calm and measured, designed to avoid startling the shark further while making his way to Alex. Seeing Daniel's approach, the teenager felt a glimmer of hope amidst the terror. Daniel's firm yet reassuring voice guided him to stay still, conserving his energy for the final push to safety. Meanwhile, Alex's friends, Michael and Sarah, alongside the gathered crowd, were a mix of emotions. Guilt, fear, and hope swirled within them as they watched the rescue unfold. Tears streaming down her face, Sarah whispered apologies into the night, regretting her part in goading Alex into the water. Michael, hands clenched, wished he could trade places with his friend, his mind tormented by what-ifs. The moment of truth came when Daniel reached Alex, quickly wrapping the rescue tube around him. The shark, perhaps deterred by the commotion or simply losing interest, drifted away into the darkness. With careful, powerful strokes, Daniel began pulling Alex back to the safety of the jet ski, where other team members were ready to haul them out of the water. Once on shore, the relief was palpable. 
The crowd erupted into cheers and tears, embracing one another in a collective sigh of relief. Alex, exhausted and shaken, was met with blankets and immediate medical attention. The reality of his brush with death was overwhelming. Still, the presence of his friends and the comforting arms of the community provided a balm to his rattled nerves. The aftermath of the event reverberated through North Shore. Alex's recklessness served as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the respect owed to the power of nature. While relieved at the successful rescue, the community engaged in serious conversations about safety measures and the importance of heeding warnings. Alex, for his part, underwent a profound transformation. The incident humbled him and instilled a newfound respect for the sea and its inhabitants. He dedicated himself to advocating for ocean safety, sharing his story with young locals and visitors alike, hoping to prevent similar incidents. The shark, a mere participant in the drama by its nature, reminded everyone of the delicate balance between human activities and wildlife habitats. The event led to increased shark conservation and education efforts, highlighting the need for coexistence and understanding. In the end, the story of Alex's night swim became more than a tale of survival. It became a catalyst for change. The community of North Shore, united by the event, emerged more robust and more committed to safeguarding each other and their shared environment. Alex's journey from a rebellious teenager to a community advocate exemplified nature's unpredictable, often transformative power, leaving an indelible mark on all who witnessed it. Every Sunday morning, while most families in the neighborhood were getting ready for church, Mia had a different kind of ritual. Instead of putting on her Sunday best and heading to the local church with her family, Mia would slip away quietly, her heart pounding with excitement as she made her way to the water's edge. Living just a stone's throw away from the shimmering blue expanse, Mia felt a magnetic pull towards the ocean. It called to her with its siren song, promising adventure and discovery just beyond the horizon. And so every Sunday she would grab her snorkel and fins, eager to explore the underwater world hidden beneath the surface. As Mia disappeared into the waves, her family would head off to church leaving her to her own devices. But when they returned home, Mia would be waiting for them, her eyes sparkling with excitement as she regaled them with tales of her underwater expeditions. Her younger brother, Zach, would listen with rapt attention, hanging on her every word as she described the colorful coral reefs, exotic fish, and hidden treasures she had encountered on her adventures. He couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy wishing he could join his sister on her aquatic escapades. Week after week, Zack begged and pleaded with his parents to let him accompany Mia on her Sunday excursions. At first, they were hesitant, worried about the ocean's dangers and the tide's unpredictable nature. But as Zack's persistence wore them down, they began to see the merit in his request. And so, one fateful Sunday morning, the family decided to skip church and explore the water together. With hearts full of anticipation, they gathered their snorkeling gear and made their way to the shoreline, eager to experience the ocean's wonders as a family. Mia prepared her snorkeling gear while her brother and parents relaxed on the shore. She slipped into her wetsuit, adjusted her mask, and secured her fins, excitement coursing through her veins at the thought of what lay beneath the surface. For Mia, the ocean was a source of endless fascination and wonder. From a young age, she had been drawn to its depths, captivated by the colorful array of marine life that called it home. And now, armed with her snorkeling gear and a sense of adventure, she was determined to explore every corner of the underwater world. For hours, Mia lost herself in the underwater landscape, marveling at the kaleidoscope of colors and the diversity of life surrounding her. She swam alongside schools of tropical fish, darting in and out of coral formations with effortless grace. But as the afternoon wore on and the sun began to dip below the horizon, Mia's attention turned to a different kind of discovery, a sunken shipwreck, its hulking silhouette looming ominously in the distance. Intrigued by the sight, Mia felt excitement as she swam closer, her curiosity piqued by the possibility of uncovering hidden treasures and secrets from the past. But as she drew nearer to the shipwreck, a sense of unease settled over her, a feeling that she was not alone in the depths, and then, with a sudden and terrifying clarity, Mia spotted it. A massive, great white shark, 
its sleek form gliding effortlessly through the water with deadly intent. Panic surged through Mia's veins as she realized she was face to face with one of the ocean's most fearsome predators, its cold, dead eyes fixed upon her with a hunger that sent shivers down her spine. Instinct took over as Mia scrambled to evade the shark's relentless pursuit. Her heart was pounding in her chest as she darted through the dark and treacherous depths of the ocean floor. The predator grew closer with each passing moment, its mighty jaws snapping shut just inches from her heels. But Mia refused to give up without a fight. Drawing on every ounce of strength and courage, she navigated the maze of coral formations and rocky outcrops, using every trick in her arsenal to outmaneuver the relentless predator. Mia's lungs burned with exertion as the minutes stretched into eternity, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she fought to stay ahead of the shark's relentless pursuit. But just when all hope seemed lost, a glimmer of light appeared on the horizon, a sign of hope in the darkness. With renewed determination, Mia pushed herself to the limit, propelling herself toward the surface with a single-minded focus on survival. Finally, she breached the water, gasping for air as she broke free. As Mia emerged from the water, her chest heaving with exertion, the salty breeze brushing against her flushed cheeks, she was consumed by a profound appreciation for the vastness of the ocean and its creatures. The rush of adrenaline still coursing through her veins, she couldn't shake the awe that filled her heart. Returning to her family on the shore, Mia recounted her thrilling encounter with the ocean's wonders. However, her parents' response was unexpected and harsh. They chastised her for her absence from church, attributing her perilous experience to divine retribution for her transgressions. Despite her protestations, they insisted that her ordeal served as a wake-up call, a consequence for straying from the path of righteousness. Shaken by her parents' condemnation and conflicting emotions, Mia was drawn to the church's doors with a newfound sense of urgency. Seeking solace and forgiveness, she immersed herself in the rituals and teachings of her faith, hoping to appease a higher power and express her gratitude for being spared from harm. Mia found comfort in prayer and reflection in the quiet sanctuary of the church. Each visit became a testament to her newfound devotion and humility, a way to reconcile her reverence for the ocean with her family's expectations of religious piety. Through her faith, she sought redemption and found solace in believing that a higher purpose guided her life. The air shimmered with the relentless summer heat of Western Australia's coastline. It was January 2011, a stolen weekend where worries melted away like ice cream in the sun. For Maya Bennett, fresh from the green chill of Tasmania, it was an escape into a world of endless blue. Her three best friends, boisterous Jess, easygoing Tim, and quiet, thoughtful Ryan, had lured her west with promises of sun-drenched beaches and a laid-back vibe miles away from their hectic city lives. Now they sprawled on their towels, laughter ringing over the crash of waves. This cove, tucked away and a long drive from the tourist haunts, was their slice of paradise. The water gleamed with a deceptively inviting turquoise hue masking the depths below. Maya, still getting used to the mainland strength of the sun, loved the feel of warm sand between her toes, the salty breeze teasing her hair. She'd always preferred the mountains to the ocean. Growing up in the shadow of Cradle Mountain had fostered a love of rocky heights and cool forests, not the relentless rhythm of the tides or the sunburn already stinging her shoulders. But the ocean's endless horizon offered freedom she couldn't quite find on solid ground. The others were already heading for the water, their shouts playful over the sound of the surf. Maya, usually the cautious one, felt a surge of recklessness. This trip was about letting go and embracing warmth and spontaneity in a way that wasn't always easy for her. The water was shockingly cold, a delicious contrast to the day's heat. Tim challenged her to a race. Jess did her usual goofy cannonball, and Maya, laughing, let herself be pulled into their boisterous fun. This was what life was supposed to feel like. Simple joy, friendship, and the thrill of being young and untamed on this vast, wild coastline. But beneath the clear water, a dark shape moved. Great whites patrolled this ocean stretch, drawn further offshore by the seal colonies. It was a fact Maya had filed away alongside warnings about snakes and sunburn. This remote possibility barely flickered across her carefree mood. Maya noticed something odd about Ryan's behavior as she floated further out. He was treading water, but his usual easygoing expression had vanished, 
replaced by a tense stillness. A hint of unease tightened her carefree mood, and she called out to him. Instead of answering, Ryan turned and gestured for them all to head back to shore. His urgency was apparent, but the unthinkable happened before Maya could warn her friends. The change in the water was almost imperceptible initially, a slight ripple that went unnoticed by the laughing group. Then an eruption of water churned scarlet, and Jess's shriek pierced the air. One moment she was splashing playfully, the next, something massive yanked her under with horrifying force. Maya froze, her mind unable to process the sudden shift from paradise to nightmare. She saw a dark fin slicing through the water, shockingly close to shore. A great white, its monstrous form visible just below the surface. The realization hit her with the force of a physical blow as the predator circled back, drawn by the scent of blood and thrashing limbs. Tim, the closest to the attack zone, propelled himself furiously toward his friend, fueled by a desperate mix of courage and terror. Panic threatened to engulf Maya, but a primal instinct kicked in. Ryan was closest to shore, frantically doggy paddling towards the safety of the sand. She screamed a wordless warning, her voice filled with a desperate urgency she'd never known. The shark, seemingly disoriented by the sudden chaos, gave them a precious few seconds. Tim reached Jess, now eerily still. He started pulling her back, every kick pushing them further from the predator's jaws. Maya scanned the bloody water, desperately seeking her friend. Where was Jess? Where was the shark? Had it lost interest, sated by its kill? Then a flash of white. The massive fish surged from the depths, its gaping maw a terrifying sight. Tim dragging Jess's dead weight was a pitifully slow target. Maya let out a scream, a futile, despairing sound. Time seemed to stretch into agonizing slow motion. She watched the shark's sleek gray form like a missile drawing nearer. She saw Tim's face etched with horror. But in that heart-stopping moment, something shifted. The shark almost upon them swerved with unnatural agility. Had it spotted easier prey? A flicker of movement, then a cry cut short as Ryan disappeared below the surface. Frantic, Maya scanned the waves, searching for any sign of her friend. But the ocean, so recently a playground, was now a scene of pure carnage. Then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the predator was gone, leaving a trail of crimson and floating debris as a grim testament to its passing. Maya dragged herself onto the sand, collapsing into the rough grains. Her whole body trembled, sobs racking her frame. Two of her friends, just gone. The idyllic beach now felt tainted with horror, the air still vibrating with screams and the sickening, metallic scent of blood. Tim knelt beside her, his face drained of color, Jess's blood dripping from his hands. He held her gaze, his eyes filled with a chilling mix of despair and guilt. In the distance, sirens wailed, jarring in their world of shock and grief. Help arrived, statements were given, and survivors were comforted with empty words and too strong tea. But for those left behind, there was no comfort, no going back. The ocean, their brief paradise, had become a graveyard. The brutal reality of nature's power shattered their stolen weekend of laughter and warmth. Maya would carry the scars of this horrific day. The images, the guilt, the knowledge that life was precarious, even in the most beautiful places. In the end, the most dangerous predators didn't always lurk in deep water. Sometimes they swam unseen right beside you, shattering innocence with a single terrible strike. With a heart full of wanderlust and eyes eager for adventure, Ethan Taylor found himself in the stunning expanse of the Great Barrier Reef, Queensland, Australia. A place renowned for its breathtaking beauty and vibrant marine life, it was the perfect backdrop for an unforgettable snorkeling experience. Ethan was an adventurous tourist, always drawn to the ocean's mysteries. He was about to immerse himself in one of the world's most spectacular underwater landscapes. Armed with his snorkel and fins, Ethan waded into the warm, crystal-clear waters, his excitement building with every breath. High in the sky, the sun painted the ocean shades of blue and green, promising a day of discovery. Ethan had heard stories of the reef's inhabitants, colorful fish, majestic sea turtles, and even the occasional friendly shark. He was eager to witness this underwater paradise for himself. As Ethan ventured further from the shore, the reef came to life around him. Schools of fish darted through the water, their scales reflecting the sunlight in bursts of color. Corals of every shape and size formed an intricate maze beneath the surface, a testament to the reef's ancient and ongoing growth. 
Ethan was in awe, feeling humbled and exhilarated by the world unfolding. However, the reef held more than beauty. It also harbored challenges and surprises. As Ethan explored a particularly vibrant coral cluster, he noticed a large shadow moving in the periphery of his vision. Turning to look, he found himself face to face with a hammerhead shark, its distinctive silhouette unmistakable against the backdrop of the reef. Ethan's heart raced. He knew that hammerhead sharks were generally not a threat to humans, but the suddenness of the encounter sent a jolt of fear through him. The shark seemed curious, its eyes observing Ethan as it circled him. Ethan remembered the advice he had been given. Stay calm, avoid sudden movements, and maintain a respectful distance from marine wildlife. Trying to control his breathing, Ethan watched the shark move gracefully through the water. It was an awe-inspiring sight, one that few people ever got to experience. Yet Ethan knew he needed to find his way back to safety. The instinctual need for self-preservation overshadowed the beauty of the encounter. The challenge now was to navigate the treacherous waters back to the shore. The reef, while stunning, was a labyrinth of corals and underwater currents. Ethan had to make careful choices. One wrong turn could lead him further away from safety or into more challenging encounters with the reef's inhabitants. As Ethan began his cautious journey back, the hammerhead shark continued its patrol of the reef, a reminder of the wild and unpredictable nature of the ocean. Ethan's adventure in the Great Barrier Reef had taken a thrilling turn, transforming his snorkeling trip into a race against time. His battle for survival in these beautiful but treacherous waters had just begun. Ethan's experience was about testing his limits and challenging his courage, determination, and respect for the natural world. As he swam towards the familiar silhouette of the shore, each stroke was a mix of fear and fascination, a journey through one of nature's most magnificent creations. This was more than just an adventure. It was a profound encounter with the wild heart of the Great Barrier Reef. With the vastness of the Great Barrier Reef stretching out before him, Ethan Taylor knew that finding his way back would require more than physical strength. It would demand all his wits and knowledge of the ocean. Though no longer in immediate sight, the hammerhead shark had ignited a spark of urgency within him. Ethan's initial thrill of discovery transformed into a focused determination to navigate the complexities of the reef's underwater terrain safely. As he swam, Ethan kept a vigilant eye on his surroundings. The reef's beauty, with its kaleidoscope of corals and bustling marine life, was now a maze that he needed to traverse with caution. The clear waters allowed him to see the rich biodiversity that called the reef home and the potential dangers that lurked within. Ethan's respect for this underwater world deepened, understanding that he was a guest in a domain where nature reigned supreme. Once a bright companion, the sun began its descent towards the horizon, casting long shadows across the reef and coloring the ocean in hues of orange and pink. Time was of the essence, and Ethan felt the weight of every passing minute. He remembered the landmarks he had passed on his way out, the towering coral formations, the sandy clearings, and the schools of fish dancing around him. These were now his guideposts, leading him back to the safety of the shore. Ethan's muscles ached from the continuous effort but his spirit remained unbroken. He focused on the rhythm of his breathing through the snorkel, the steady movement of his fins propelling him forward. The ocean's currents, once gentle guides, now seemed to challenge his every move as if testing his resolve to reach the end of this unexpected journey. As the shore finally came into view, relief washed over Ethan. The beach had never seemed so inviting, with its golden sand and the promise of solid ground beneath his feet. Yet as he approached, Ethan felt profound gratitude for the experience. Though harrowing, the encounter with the hammerhead shark had offered him a glimpse into the raw beauty and power of the natural world. It was a reminder of the respect and humility with which one must approach these wild spaces. Climbing out of the water, Ethan took a moment to look back at the ocean. With all its wonders and dangers, the Great Barrier Reef had given him an adventure he would never forget. It was a testament to his resilience and a powerful lesson in the value of perseverance and respect for nature. Ethan's story of survival against the odds would remain a cherished memory, a tale of the human spirit and the enduring allure of the unknown. As he returned to the warmth and safety of civilization, Ethan knew that this experience had changed him. He had faced the treacherous waters of the Great Barrier Reef and emerged unscathed and enriched by the encounter. 
The adventure had begun as a simple snorkeling trip, a desire to explore the beauty of one of the world's most iconic coral reefs. It had turned into a race against time, a battle for survival in the face of the unpredictable forces of nature. Ethan's journey was a reminder of the delicate balance between the thrill of adventure and the ever-present need for caution and respect in the natural world. Ethan's adventure ended as the sun set on the Great Barrier Reef. Still, his encounter with the Hammerhead Shark and his battle for survival in Queensland, Australia's beautiful treacherous waters would live on. A powerful narrative of adventure, respect, and the indomitable human spirit. The crystal clear waters of the Grand Cayman shimmered under the midday sun. It was July 2007, and for Ethan Moore, this was paradise. An avid adventurer, he'd always been drawn to the thrill of the unknown. Scuba diving, with its promise of hidden worlds beneath the waves, became his latest obsession. This was more than a vacation. It was an initiation. Ethan had recently completed his open water certification, and the lure of the Cayman's famous dive sites was irresistible. He was here with a small tour group led by a seasoned local guide named Kai. Their itinerary promised shipwrecks, vibrant coral reefs, and an exhilarating array of marine life. One particular dive had captured Ethan's imagination, the labyrinthine tunnels of Eden's Grotto. The brochures described a maze of underwater caves, sunlight filtering through the openings to create an ethereal glow. The area was teeming with life, including Caribbean reef sharks' sleek, curious presence. A shiver of excitement raced down his spine. He craved this challenge, a chance to test his fledgling skills in a truly unique environment. Reef sharks were apex predators in this ecosystem, yet they are known to be generally cautious around divers. Their presence added a thrilling dimension to the dive, but Ethan knew of the inherent risks of entering their domain. As they prepared to descend into the depths this morning, his excitement was tinged with a healthy dose of respect. The dive began smoothly enough. The cave was even more breathtaking than Ethan had imagined. Shafts of sunlight pierced the water, illuminating vibrant sponges and darting schools of fish. He felt the pressure increase in his ears as he swam deeper, the muffled rhythm of his breathing a comforting constant. Kai led the group through the maze of tunnels, pointing out hidden creatures along the way. Then Ethan saw them, three reef sharks materializing from the shadowy depths. They circled the group, their movements sinuous and unnervingly graceful. Though not overly large, their presence carried a sense of predatory power that sent a jolt of unease through him. He exchanged nervous glances with a woman in their group. Kai gestured to stay calm. Passive behavior was crucial in these encounters. Ethan tried to quell his racing heart and focus on his breathing. The sharks continued to circle, their curiosity escalating. Ethan felt the tension in the group escalates as well. They were far deeper into the caves now, visibility limited. The sense of wonder he'd felt moments before was overtaken by a prickling unease. Kai kept a watchful eye on the sharks, his hand poised near his tank's air release valve, the signal to retreat to the surface if things took a turn. Then it happened. One of the tourists panicked, thrashing in the water and making a loud, distressed noise. The sudden movement triggered a chain reaction. The shark surged forward, the lead shark snapping at the diver's flailing leg. The woman screamed a blood-curdling sound that reverberated through the confined space. Chaos erupted. The other two sharks joined the frenzy, drawn by the scent of blood and the panicked movement. Ethan was knocked sideways by a surge of bodies as the other divers scrambled away. His regulator was dislodged from his mouth. He gasped, a strangled sound lost in the chaos as he flailed for the mouthpiece. In the dim light he saw the injured diver being dragged further into the cave, the sharks tearing at her. A primal fear twisted in his gut. He had to get out now. He kicked wildly, desperately searching for the way they'd come, but the confusion of the attack had disoriented him completely. Ethan found the mouthpiece and gulped, his heart pounding against his ribs. The air in his tank was running dangerously low. Each second he spent lost in this murky labyrinth felt a step closer to a suffocating death. His vision tunneled, the world reduced to twisting passages and flashes of silver as the sharks darted past. He twisted into another narrow opening, scraping his bare arms against a rough rock. It seemed like a dead end, the space barely wide enough to move. And then he saw it, a faint glimmer of light up ahead. 
Hope surged through him and he kicked harder, forcing his way forward. The tunnel opened into a small cavern, sunlight filtering through a crack in the roof above. Ethan hauled himself to the surface, gasping for air. He was alone. He struggled to regain his composure, his breaths ragged in the enclosed space. His tank was almost empty. Panic threatened to consume him again. Even if he'd momentarily escaped the sharks, he was still trapped inside the cave with no air left. He forced down the despair, his survivor instinct reasserting itself. He had to keep moving, had to find another way out. He dove back under the water, the exertion and dwindling oxygen playing havoc on his senses. Black spots danced on the edges of his vision. He swam blindly, his outstretched hands suddenly catching a gap in the rock face. A narrow channel just big enough to squeeze through. Could this be his escape? With a final surge of strength, he pulled himself into the opening, scraping his skin raw against the jagged edges. The tunnel twisted upwards, a sliver of light beckoning him onward. His tank was almost empty, each ragged gasp filled with the metallic taste of panic. The pressure in his ears lessened. He had to be nearing the surface. He kicked frantically, his vision blurring. Lungs screaming, he burst into the dazzling light of day from the confining tunnel. Gasping like a beached fish, he broke the surface, the salt sprays stinging his eyes. The dive boat was thankfully close by. Someone spotted him and yelled in alarm. Waving weakly, he tried to shout, but his voice was barely a croak. His muscles gave out, unable to fight anymore. He swam with every ounce of strength left, his body threatening to betray him. Strong hands latched onto him, dragging him over the boat's gunwale. Rough blankets were thrown over him as he collapsed onto the deck, shivering uncontrollably. He managed a choked sob, then drifted into a darkness filled with the relentless pounding of his heart. Safe, alive, but forever changed. The exhilarating beauty of diving would forever be tainted with the terror and the raw reality of a world where he was not the apex predator. In the expansive beauty of the Great Barrier Reef, off the coast of Queensland, Australia, the sun bathed the turquoise waters in a brilliant light, creating a paradise for divers worldwide. Among these was a group of amateur divers led by the charismatic Ethan Collins. Ethan and his close friend Sarah Jennings a marine biology enthusiast and Alex Turner, a photography aficionado, had embarked on an underwater adventure. Their goal was to explore the vibrant coral gardens and capture the stunning biodiversity of the reef, blissfully unaware of the dangers that lurked beneath. The trio, equipped with diving gear and cameras, descended into the mesmerizing underwater world, hearts brimming with excitement. The reef was alive, teeming with schools of colorful fish darting between corals, graceful sea turtles and beams of sunlight piercing the water to illuminate the marine wonderland below. Sarah shared her vast knowledge of marine life, pointing out different coral species. At the same time, Alex was consumed by his quest for the perfect photograph, his camera clicking non-stop. As they ventured more profoundly, the reef's beauty unfolded around them in a spectacle of life and color. However, unknown to the divers, a predator prowled in the depths. A bull shark drawn by the flurry of activity was inching closer, its presence unnoticed until it was too late. The serenity of the dive was shattered when the shark, blending into the deep blue, launched a sudden attack. Near the shark, Ethan felt a sharp tug on his leg, the force of the attack sending a wave of panic through his body. He caught a fleeting glimpse of the shark's formidable silhouette before it vanished into the murky depths leaving a trail of fear and confusion. Sarah and Alex, witnessing the attack, rushed to Ethan's aid as blood began to cloud the water around them, painting a stark contrast to the vibrant hues of the reef. The severity of Ethan's injury was a grim reminder of the ocean's unpredictability and the inherent dangers within. The focus of the group shifted immediately to survival. Their adventure turned into a frantic effort to ascend to the surface and return to their boat all while keeping Ethan conscious and calm. The task was daunting. The shark remained a constant threat, and every second underwater increased Ethan's risk of blood loss and shock. Amid the chaos, Sarah applied a makeshift tourniquet to Ethan's leg, attempting to stem the bleeding. At the same time, Alex supported Ethan, helping him stay afloat. Their ascent was slow and tense, each bubble rising to the surface, a reminder of the danger that still lurked below. The boat, their only hope for escape, appeared a distant speck against the vast ocean. 
As they swam towards safety, the reality of their perilous situation sank in. Once a symbol of beauty and exploration, the reef had revealed its darker side, reminding them of nature's unpredictability and the thin line between adventure and disaster. As Ethan, Sarah, and Alex made their painstaking way towards the boat, every stroke through the water was weighed down by urgency and fear. The reef, a realm of unparalleled beauty, had become a stage for a life-and-death struggle. The shark's attack had not only left Ethan grievously injured, still, it had also shattered the group's illusion of a haven beneath the waves. Now, the very ocean that had beckoned them with its mysteries threatened to claim one of their own. The journey back was fraught with challenges. With Ethan's condition worsening, Sarah and Alex's efforts to keep him afloat and conscious became more desperate. Sarah, recalling every piece of first aid knowledge she had, instructed Alex to keep talking to Ethan, to keep him engaged with the world above the water's surface. Their voices, muffled by the water and their equipment, nonetheless provided a lifeline, a slender thread of hope amidst the vast, indifferent ocean. The presence of the shark loomed over them like a specter, its potential return a constant threat that propelled them forward with a mix of dread and determination. The boat, their beacon of safety, seemed to drift further away with each glance back, a mirage on the horizon painfully slow to materialize into a tangible rescue. Upon reaching the boat, the relief was immediate but tempered by the gravity of Ethan's condition. With no time to waste, Sarah and Alex hoisted Ethan aboard, their actions fueled by adrenaline. They administered first aid as best as they could, staunching the bleeding and wrapping Ethan in blankets to combat shock. The radio crackled to life as they called for emergency assistance, their voices tense but precise, reporting their location and the urgent need for a medical evacuation. The wait for the rescue helicopter was agonizing. Each minute stretched into an eternity, with Ethan's labored breathing and the gentle rocking of the boat as stark reminders of the fragility of life. When the sound of the helicopter finally pierced the air, it was like a chorus of angels, a promise of salvation after what had seemed like a descent into hell. The rescue operation was swift and efficient. As the helicopter's winch lowered, Sarah and Alex watched with bated breath as Ethan was secured and then lifted into the air, his body limp but alive. The moment was bittersweet, a mix of relief for Ethan's rescue and a profound realization of how quickly joy can turn to despair. In the aftermath of the rescue, the trio sat on the boat, enveloped in a reflective and healing silence. With its vibrant life and hidden dangers, the Great Barrier Reef has imparted a harsh lesson in respect and humility. They sought adventure and found a trial that tested their limits, courage, and bond. Their ordeal spread as a cautionary tale for other divers. It reignited discussions about the balance between human activity and preserving natural habitats. For Ethan, Sarah, and Alex, the experience was a pivotal moment in their lives, a reminder of the ocean's majesty and menace. They had ventured into the deep as enthusiasts seeking beauty. They returned as survivors, forever changed by knowing what lies beneath the surface. Their adventure had ended, but the story of their survival, of friendship and resilience in the face of nature's unforgiving power, would continue to resonate. A testament to the human spirit's capacity to overcome even the most daunting challenges. Emma, a sophomore at a university in Johannesburg, sat in her dorm room scrolling through her social media feed, idly tapping through photos and updates from friends. As she scrolled, her eyes caught on an advertisement that quickened her heartbeat. An opportunity to explore the underwater world while safely ensconced within a shark cage. And to top it off, there was a discount offer. The image of the clear blue ocean and the promise of adventure sparked something within Emma. She had always been drawn to the ocean, its vastness and mystery calling to her in a way nothing else did. But the idea of coming face to face with sharks, even from the safety of a cage, filled her with excitement and trepidation. However, the discount offer was too good to pass up, especially since Emma had just been paid from her part-time job at a local store. The idea of using her hard-earned money to embark on an adventure of a lifetime was irresistible. With trembling fingers, Emma clicked on the advertisement, her heart racing with anticipation. She read through the details of the offer, picturing herself submerged beneath the waves, surrounded by the beauty and wonder of the underwater world. Emma filled out the booking form without hesitating, her excitement building with each mouse click. 
As she entered her payment information, she couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration coursing through her veins. This was the chance she had been waiting for to experience something truly extraordinary. Within minutes, Emma received a confirmation email, her heart soaring as she read through the details of her upcoming adventure. She had done it. She had taken the first step towards fulfilling her dream of exploring the ocean depths. Emma could hardly contain her excitement in the days leading up to the excursion. She pored over maps of the dive site, researching the marine life she might encounter and mentally preparing herself for the adventure ahead. Despite her nerves, she knew that this was an opportunity she couldn't afford to miss. Finally, the day of the dive arrived and Emma found herself standing on the boat's deck, the salt air tangy on her lips and the ocean lapping against the hull, soothing her nerves. With each passing moment, her anticipation grew until, finally, it was time to descend into the depths. Emma's anticipation grew with each passing moment as the boat cut through the waves. She couldn't wait to descend into the depths and witness these majestic creatures in their natural habitat. Little did she know that her excitement would soon give way to sheer terror. The boat came to a stop and Emma felt a surge of adrenaline course through her veins as she gazed out at the vast expanse of the ocean. The crew wasted no time lowering the cage into the water and securing it to the side of the boat with thick ropes. Emma donned her wetsuit and diving gear, her hands trembling with excitement and nerves. With a final reassuring smile from the crew, Emma descended into the cage, the cool water enveloping her body like a second skin. As she submerged beneath the surface, a sense of awe washed over her, the ocean alive with vibrant colors and teeming with life. But her sense of wonder quickly turned to alarm when she spotted a shadow moving in the distance, growing larger and larger with each passing second. A hush fell over the boat as the crew and fellow tourists watched in awe as a colossal great white shark breached the surface in a display of raw power. Emma's heart skipped a beat as she realized the enormity of the creature before her, its massive jaws opening and closing with deadly precision. Time seemed to stand still for a moment as Emma and the shark locked eyes, a primal instinct urging her to flee. But before she could react, disaster struck. With a thunderous crash, the great white shark slammed into the cage, its massive bulk sending shockwaves through the water. Emma was thrown against the metal bars, her breath catching in her throat as she struggled to comprehend what was happening. Panic surged through Emma's veins as she realized she was trapped inside the cage with the apex predator. The metal bars groaned under the pressure, threatening to buckle at any moment. With each passing second, the water filled with bubbles and debris, obscuring her vision and heightening her dread. Summoning all her courage, Emma fought against the rising tide of fear threatening to consume her. She knew that she had to remain calm, to reason in the face of imminent danger. With trembling hands, she reached for the emergency release mechanism, praying that it would still function despite the chaos unfolding around her. But as she struggled to free herself, Emma felt a powerful force slam into the cage again, sending shards of metal flying through the water. The world spun around her as the cage lurched sideways, the ocean closing around her like a suffocating embrace. Desperation clawed at Emma's mind as she searched for an escape route, her lungs burning for precious oxygen. In a last-ditch effort, she reached for her diving knife and slashed at the ropes tethering the cage to the boat above. With each stroke, she felt a glimmer of hope flicker to life within her, a beacon of light amidst the darkness. Finally, with adrenaline-fueled strength, Emma broke free from the cage's confines, her body propelled toward the surface. As she breached the water, gasping for air, she was greeted by the sight of the boat looming above her, its crew shouting words of encouragement. With trembling limbs, Emma reached out for the outstretched hands of the crew, her fingers grasping onto safety with desperate hunger. As she was pulled aboard the boat, she collapsed onto the deck, her body racked with exhaustion and relief. As she lay there, trembling and spent, Emma couldn't help but marvel at the sheer power and unpredictability of the ocean. She had faced death head-on and emerged victorious, a survivor of the harrowing ordeal that had unfolded beneath the waves. But even as she caught her breath, Emma knew that the memory of that fateful day would linger with her forever, a constant reminder of the thin line between life and death in the depths of the ocean. Since escaping from the deep water, Emma has never tried to explore it again. The waters of the Great Australian Bight shimmered under the harsh glare of the July sun, 
It was 2007, the depths of winter in South Australia. Still, for marine biologist Anya Petrova, the water was a second home. Today, it would be a battleground. Anya wasn't your typical beach bunny. She'd grown up in the harsh beauty of the Russian north with snow swirling where others saw sand. But she'd always dreamt of the ocean, its vast mystery calling to her even as a small girl. Now, working on her doctorate, she spent her days chasing the secrets of the world's apex predators, sharks. Her study site, a remote stretch of coastline known as Neptune's Playground, was infamous for great white sightings. These weren't mindless killing machines of the movies, but creatures of strategy and incredible power. Anya longed to understand them, to help shatter the myths that led to senseless culls and an unbalanced ecosystem. Today was about observation. She and her research partner, grizzled old Tamo, would descend into a shark cage anchored just off a known seal colony. It was controversial work. Some said using bait was too risky, but Anya believed the insight gained was worth it. The ride to the study site was choppy, the boat slapping the waves. Tomo regaled her with tales of close calls and scars earned over the years. His gruffness masked a grudging respect for her knowledge, a newcomer accepted into the old boys' club of shark research. As they neared their destination, Anya's heart thumped a counterpoint to the thrum of the boat's engine. This wasn't about bravery. It was about facing a fundamental instinctive fear. Sharks were wired into the oldest parts of the human brain, whispering of teeth and darkness and the fragility of flesh. The water here had an oily sheen and the smell of fish was strong. A fur seal zipped past the boat, its dark eyes wary. Anya knew this was the shark's hunting ground and she was stepping directly into the arena. It wasn't about conquering her fear but living alongside it long enough to do her work. The cage was lowered with a resounding splash. Tomo, after a lifetime of dives, stayed topside, eyes glued to the water. Strapping on her gear, Anya felt a familiar mix of excitement and the prickle of pure, undiluted terror. This was where she thrived on that knife edge between wonder and oblivion. The first sighting was breathtaking. Its gray skin blended with the murky water and a massive form materialized from the deep. The great white cruised past the cage, its black eye seemingly fixated on her. Anya, heart-pounding, filmed the encounter, her scientific mind battling a surge of pure primal terror. This was beauty and brutality embodied. The shark circled, its movements mesmerizingly fluid. Anya knew the routine assessed the potential meal and test the defenses. The cage wasn't an obstacle, more of an annoyance, but it would protect her, mostly. She'd seen the footage, those massive jaws capable of biting through steel. Then it happened. The shark charged a torpedo of muscle and teeth. It slammed into the cage, the impact jarring her teeth. It thrashed and circled, frustrated. Anya clung to the bars, fighting against a wave of nausea as the cage swayed violently. Then, silence. She risked a glance out. Nothing. Had it given up? Anya struggled to regulate her breathing. Above, she could just make out the silhouette of the boat. Tama would be watching, worried but unable to help. Her lifeline was the comm system hooked to her mask. She activated it, her voice barely more than a frightened whisper against the static. A reply echoed back, tense and strained, hinting at an unseen complication. The line crackled, then cut off, leaving Anya alone with the terrifying implication of whatever was hampering the winch. Panic flared. Being stuck above water was dangerous enough, attracting more sharks, but stuck underwater. That was a death sentence. Minutes ticked by, each one agonizingly slow. She scanned the water, desperately searching for a sign of her attacker. Then, the water pressure changed, a prickling on her neck. The shark was back. It circled the cage as if assessing it for flaws. Anya knew her time was running out. If Tomo couldn't free the cage, she'd drown, trapped within feet of the surface. But she wasn't helpless. Years of studying shark behavior flickered through her panic. She'd read theories. Tapping the snout would confuse a shark and disrupt its attack pattern. It was a long shot, but it was her only shot. Grabbing a spare camera rod, she took a deep, steadying breath and reached through the bars. The shark turned, sensing the movement. She lunged out, tapping it on the snout twice, thrice. The shark recoiled, momentarily disoriented by her counterattack. Anya lunged back, her heart pounding with terror and desperate hope. It was working. But she knew time was not on her side. 
She repeated the action, a desperate gamble against the looming threat. The shark backed off again, its movement slowed, seemingly confused by the unexpected resistance. Suddenly the cage jerked upwards. Tamo's voice, filled with urgency, crackled through the comms. Anya scrambled towards the ladder as the cage was winched up with agonizing slowness. Her eyes were fixed on the water below, where the shark still circled ominously. Breaking the surface felt like a resurrection. Gulping ragged breaths, Anya collapsed on the deck. Tamo's face, a mask of relief. He helped her out of her gear with rough hands that were surprisingly gentle. When the cage was back on deck, he turned and gunned the engine, speeding away. Only as the shoreline came into view, Anya allowed herself to cry. It was relief, terror, and a newfound respect for the thin line between researcher and prey. She had stared death in the eye and lived to tell the tale. From this day on, her work wouldn't just be academic. It would be a testament, a tribute to the magnificent, terrifying creatures that ruled the deep. Jeffreys Bay, South Africa, a haven for surfers seeking the embrace of the wild waves, became the stage for an extraordinary tale of bravery and survival in 2010. Nathan Carter, a surfer known for his love of adventure and his pursuit of the perfect wave, found himself in the remote waters of this renowned surfing destination. With his heart set on conquering the sea's untamed forces, Nathan paddled out into the ocean, his eyes sparkling with anticipation. The day was bright, with the sun casting a golden glow over the water, making the waves shimmer like liquid silver. The wind was just right, creating the perfect conditions for surfing. With his board under him, Nathan felt a connection to the sea, a bond forged by years of riding waves in some of the most beautiful and challenging spots around the globe. A sense of peace enveloped him as Nathan waited for the right wave. He was alone, but not lonely, surrounded by the ocean's vastness, then, without warning, the tranquility of the moment was shattered. A dark shadow emerged from the depths, rushing toward him. Nathan's instincts kicked in and he realized he was not alone. A great white shark, one of the ocean's most formidable predators, had entered the scene. The shark, perhaps drawn by the surfer's movement and energy, circled Nathan, its dorsal fin cutting through the water's surface like a knife. Nathan's heart raced, but he knew panic would not help him. He had heard stories of surfers encountering sharks, but he never imagined he would find himself in such a situation. With little time to react, Nathan faced the Great White, trying to make himself appear larger and more intimidating. He shouted at the shark, hoping to scare it away, but the predator was undeterred. As the shark made its approach, Nathan prepared for the inevitable. He used his surfboard as a barrier between himself and the Great White, knowing that his survival depended on his subsequent actions. The shark, perhaps assessing Nathan as a potential threat rather than prey, made a swift pass, its teeth grazing the edge of the surfboard. Nathan felt the creature's power, a reminder of the raw force of nature. Using all his strength, he pushed the shark away with his board, creating enough distance to make a quick decision. Realizing that his best chance of escape was to catch a wave back to shore, Nathan paddled with all his might, adrenaline fueling his efforts. As a wave approached, he seized the opportunity, riding it with a skill born of years of experience. The Great White, losing interest or perhaps respecting the surfer's resilience, disappeared into the depths, leaving Nathan to return to safety. Reaching the shore, Nathan's legs trembled, not from the physical exertion, but from realizing what he had just experienced. He had faced one of the ocean's greatest predators and survived. The encounter with the great white shark at Jeffreys Bay would be a story he'd carry with him forever, a testament to his resilience and determination to survive against all odds. As Nathan stood on the sandy shores of Jeffreys Bay, catching his breath and letting the sun dry the salt water on his skin, the weight of the encounter sank in. His brush with the great white shark was more than a tale of survival. It was a life-changing moment that would redefine his relationship with the ocean and his passion for surfing. Despite the fear and the immediate danger he had faced, Nathan's love for the sea and surfing remained unshaken. Instead, the experience deepened his respect for the ocean's creatures and unpredictable nature. He understood that sharing the waves meant respecting the habitat of magnificent beings like the great white shark. Nathan's courage and quick-thinking story spread among the local surf community and beyond. 
His fellow surfers, who had always known him as a thrill seeker, now saw him embodying resilience and determination. Nathan became an unintentional mentor, inspiring surfers and anyone who heard his story to face their fears and respect the natural world. In the following days, Nathan returned to the waves, his spirit undeterred by the close call. His encounter with the Great White became a source of inspiration, a reminder of the strength, it will to survive that resides within each person. Nathan's resilience in the face of one of the ocean's greatest predators encouraged those around him to approach life with courage, respect nature's power, and embrace the beauty of living fully, even in danger. Jeffrey's Bay, with its rolling waves and breathtaking sunsets, continued to be a place of adventure and discovery for Nathan and many others. But for Nathan, it was also a place of profound personal growth and a reminder of the day he faced off against a great white shark and lived to tell the tale. His experience underscored the delicate balance between seeking thrills and respecting the forces of nature, a lesson he would carry with him in all his future endeavors, both in and out of the water. The open water off the coast of West Palm, Florida teemed with life under a blistering August sun. It was 2009 and Jack Dawson had been a fisherman all his life. These waters, the churn of the Gulf Stream, were his backyard. He knew its moods, dangers, and the thrill of hauling in a trophy catch. Today, Jack wasn't on his usual charter boat with eager tourists. He was further out, alone on his prized possession, a 20-foot skiff, weathered but reliable. He'd taken the day to himself, craving the solitude and the fight of something bigger than the usual game fish. Hammerheads lurked out here, sleek predators with their strange, distinctive heads. Jack felt a tingle of excitement and a deep, primal respect for these creatures. Hammerhead sharks were drawn to this coastline, finding ample prey in the nutrient-rich waters of the Gulf Stream. Aggressive and built for pursuit, they weren't the largest of sharks, but they were fearless hunters. Jack had seen them up close plenty of times, their odd silhouettes unmistakable beneath his boat. But hooking one? That was a different challenge entirely. His weather-beaten skin crinkled in a grin as he felt the first solid tug on his line. This was no snapper or grouper. The line sizzled through the water, cutting an arc that sent spray shimmering in the sunlight. Jack braced his legs, his whole body focusing on the battle of wills that played out beneath the surface. He reeled in slowly, gaining ground inch by inch. Years of experience, he had taught him the dangers of rushing things. This was a powerful fish, whatever it was, and the fight could instantly turn. As it drew closer, Jack's grin widened. The unmistakable shape of a hammerhead shark broke the surface, thrashing wildly against the line. It was smaller than he'd hoped, maybe eight feet long, but its fight was ferocious. Adrenaline coursed through Jack banishing any lingering lethargy from the morning heat. He'd been a commercial fisherman for most of his life, hauling in nets and wrangling heavy fish. It was a tough job, the romance worn thin by endless hours and unpredictable income. Moments like this, though, pure, unadulterated joy. He had the shark close to the boat now. One last surge, and he might be able to get a good look, maybe even manage a quick photo before the release. Jack leaned over the side, extending his reach, and then disaster struck. The shark thrashed violently as Jack leaned over the edge of the boat. Its momentum carried it upwards in a flash of silvery muscle. Jack yelled. A startled sound cut off as the shark's hammer-like head slammed into his chest. He was knocked backward, his ribs cracking under the force of the impact. The world tilted sickeningly. Jack's hand slipped from the line and he tumbled overboard, plunging into the churning water. The sudden shock of cold water was almost as brutal as the pain flaring in his chest. He gasped, choking on a mouthful of salt water. The shark circled back, a dark shape against the bright shimmer of the ocean. Disoriented and struggling to stay afloat, Jack was terrifyingly exposed. He flailed his arms, yelling more in panic than any hope of scaring off the shark. Blood swirled in the water, a murky trail from his injured side. He knew what that meant, the shark wouldn't hold back now. His shouts turned into ragged sobs as he twisted in the water, desperate to see the next attack coming. The hammerhead surged at him again. It was astonishingly fast, a torpedo of muscle and teeth. Jack managed to kick out at the last second, feeling the scrape of rough skin against his leg. But the shark twisted, avoiding his desperate defense. 
its jaws clamped down on his arm, searing pain radiating up from his bicep. In a blur of terror, Jack thrashed and punched at the creature. Blind instinct overrode any sense of strategy. He felt teeth tear through flesh. There was a sickening wrench, and then he stared at the ragged stump where his left hand used to be. Shock and pain warred within him, rendering him momentarily numb. The shark retreated, satisfied, then circled again. It was toying with him now, the hunter savoring its broken prey. Jack's cries faded into choked gasps. The boat bobbed nearby, tantalizingly close yet impossibly distant. Despair began to creep over him, cold and insidious. Then through the haze he saw it. His fishing gaff, a sharp hook on a long pole, had fallen into the water with him. It floated just beyond his reach. Summoning a final burst of desperate strength, he lunged for it. His fingers brushed the smooth wooden handle. The shark sensed the shift, closing in for the final strike. It was almost too late. The great hammerhead surged towards him, its jaws gaping. But Jack had the gaff now. With a scream more of rage than fear, he thrust the sharp point into the shark's head. He barely felt the impact, only a jarring jolt that traveled up his arms. The shark flinched violently, then thrashed away, painting the water crimson. Jack watched it retreat, its movement sluggish now. It was hurt, maybe dying. In that bloody victory, there was little satisfaction, just a bone-deep exhaustion. Struggling, choking on salt water, he hauled himself towards the boat. His vision was blurring, and he could barely cling to the side. Each ragged breath brought a fresh wave of agony, digging deep, fueled by a desperate will to survive. He somehow managed to pull himself back on deck. He crumpled there, a sobbing, broken mess. But he was still alive. The sun blazed down on the beaches of Crescent Cove, a hidden stretch of coastline along Australia's rugged southern shore. It was November 2005, the dawn of summer, and the water was alive with the season's energy. Tom Walker, a seasoned surfer with sun-bleached hair and a mischievous grin, scanned the lineup of churning waves. His weathered hands gripped the rails of his board, the salt-crusted fiberglass familiar beneath his calloused fingers. Crescent Cove was his sanctuary, where the worries of his life running a small surf shop could dissolve in the rush of a good ride. Tom's Tubes, they called it back in town, a half-joking tribute to his shack of a store and his obsession with the ocean. It wasn't a fancy life, selling waxed-up boards and sun-faded t-shirts, but it was his. Every penny saved, every spare hour was dedicated to chasing that elusive feeling of riding the perfect wave. The conditions were ideal today, a clean swell rolling in, the water glassy and inviting. His friends were out there, too, their laughter echoing off the weathered cliffs that sheltered the cove. There was Pete, his best mate since they were grommets constantly pushing him to take it one step further. Cena, Pete's girlfriend, steadily paddled a force of calm amidst the chaos. And then a few of the local crew, familiar faces who shared that deep connection to the sea. Bull sharks were a known presence in these waters. Drawn to river mouths and murky estuaries, they were notorious for their aggression and unpredictable nature. Tom wasn't naive, he respected the risks that came with his passion. Every time he paddled out, the knowledge of those powerful predators lurked in the back of his mind, a low hum of caution under the exhilaration. Out beyond the breakers, he found his rhythm. He dropped into a wave, carving a smooth line, feeling the ocean surge propelling him. The rush was pure, a primal joy that washed away any lingering thoughts of sharks or the day-to-day -day grind back on shore. Life got messy on land bills, breakups, the slow grind of routine. But out here, it was simple. Him, the board, and the power of the wave. He paddled further out, seeking the next extensive set. Conversation dwindled between him and his friends, replaced by the hypnotic lull of the sea. This sense of peace made him lower his guard for a crucial moment. A shadow flickered beneath his board. It was a fleeting glimpse, a ripple in the otherwise clear water. His heart pounded in his chest, a drumbeat drowning out the crash of the waves. There it was again, the shadow larger now, rising from the murky depths below. He knew with sickening certainty that it wasn't a school of fish this time. The bull shark erupted from the water with horrifying speed. Its blunt snout smashed into his board, throwing him into the air. Tom's scream was lost in the ocean's roar as he hit the water, his body tumbling in the creature's wake. The shark circled, its dark eyes cold and unreadable. 
Tom thrashed frantically, his board snapped in half and useless. It lunged again and he felt a searing pain shoot through his calf. Teeth tore through wetsuit and flesh, the water around him exploding in a swirl of crimson. Blind panic threatened to overwhelm him. His friends were shouting, a frantic blur in the distance. Paddled towards them, scream, fight. But the pain was crippling, and the shark wasn't done. It closed in again, its massive jaws filling his entire vision. Just when Tom thought this was it, that he would become another tragic statistic, instinct overrode conscious thought. He kicked out wildly, catching the shark's blunt snout. The blow was puny compared to the creature's force, but it momentarily startled it. Tom seized on that split second of opportunity. Adrenaline was flooding his system, so he ignored the unbearable pain in his leg and paddled frantically. He could hear Pete yelling, a mix of fear and urgency. Each ragged stroke pulled him further away from the shark, now circling at a distance, seemingly assessing its next move. The world became a blur of pain and relentless movement. His arm burned, his breath rasped in his throat. He couldn't see the shark anymore, but the fear of it relentlessly pursued him. Just keep paddling. Just keep moving. Suddenly hands were on him, hauling him out of the water and onto the heaving deck of Pete's board. His leg throbbed in fiery waves, a grotesque mangled mess. Senna ripped her t-shirt, a makeshift tourniquet to try and stem the relentless bleeding. The ride back to shore was a brutal symphony of pain. His friends took turns paddling furiously, the rhythm of their strokes against the water a harsh counterpoint to the screaming agony in his leg. Tom's vision tunneled, the world reduced to flashes of the sun on the water, the taste of salt and blood in his mouth. Someone was shouting at him, the words indistinguishable over the pounding in his ears. He wanted to answer, to scream back, but the effort seemed beyond him. Sand scraped against his bare back as they dragged him onto the beach. The world tilted sickeningly, the blue sky, the anxious faces hovering above him, all of it swimming and blurring. Strong hands pressed against his wound, rough fabric biting into his ruined flesh in a desperate attempt to stop the flow of blood. Needles pierced his skin, an incredible rush followed by a wave of blissful numbness. Yet even as his senses failed him, a defiant sliver of his spirit remained. He had looked into the eyes of nature's raw power, felt its teeth tear through his body, and somehow, impossibly, he endured. The shark, the pain, couldn't extinguish the defiant spark within him. He wouldn't surrender. This wasn't the end. He would fight. He would survive. In the early hours of a misty morning in 2021, along the expansive waters of the Zambezi River, which carves its way between Zimbabwe and Zambia, Michael Sibanda, an experienced fisherman with decades of navigating these waters, embarked on what was to be an extraordinary day. Known in his community for his unmatched skills and deep respect for the river, Michael set out in his small, well-worn boat, hoping the day would yield a bountiful catch. With its sprawling deltas and rich biodiversity, the Zambezi had always been a source of life and livelihood for the local communities. Michael, like his father before him, had learned to read the river's moods and movements, understanding the patterns of the fish and the rhythm of the waters. On this day, however, the river seemed different, as if holding its breath, the usually vibrant bird calls eerily subdued. As the sun began to climb, dispersing the last of the morning fog, Michael navigated to a secluded spot known only to a few. The area was teeming with potential. The waters here were more profound and relaxed, attracting various fish. Setting up his fishing gear with practiced ease, Michael cast his line into the water the silence around him broken only by the gentle lapping of the river against his boat. The morning passed peacefully, with Michael lost in the solitude of his thoughts, the occasional tug on his line the only interruption. It was not until midday when the sun was high overhead, casting a brilliant light across the water, that the scene's tranquility was shattered. Without warning, a massive force struck the side of his boat, jolting Michael from his reverie. At first, he thought it was a log or debris carried by the current, but his blood ran cold as he peered into the water. A pair of dark, unblinking eyes stared back at him, belonging to a creature that seemed impossible in the river's freshwater. A shark, its sleek, menacing form cutting through the water with ease. Panic surged through Michael as the shark circled, its intentions unclear, 
but its presence an undeniable threat. The fisherman knew he was far from help. The remote location of his fishing spot was now a disadvantage. His mind raced, recalling his knowledge of sharks, though such creatures were tales of the ocean, not the river. As the shark made another pass, closer this time, its dorsal fin slicing through the water like a knife, Michael realized he was fighting for his life. He relied on his wits and experience with no weapons, grabbing his oars and striking the water, hoping to deter the predator. But the shark was persistent, each passing more aggressive, its body's power dangerously rocking the boat. The attack, when it came, was swift and terrifying. The shark rammed the boat with enough force to nearly tip it over, snapping its jaws at Michael's oar as he struggled to keep the creature at bay. The fisherman's heart pounded in his chest, fear and adrenaline fueling his actions as he fought to avoid becoming the shark's next meal. Back on shore, the news of a fisherman battling a shark in the Zambezi spread like wildfire, a mix of disbelief and fear gripping the community. Rescuers were dispatched, but each passing minute grew more dire. Michael's struggle against the shark was not just a battle for survival, but a testament to the unpredictable power of nature, a reminder of the thin line between man and the wild. As the community waited anxiously for news, the outcome of Michael's encounter hung in the balance, a moment suspended in time, where the vast, untamed river held a story as ancient as it was unexpected. In those moments, suspended between life and death, Michael's instincts took over. Drawing upon years of experience on the river, he remembered an old fisherman's tale about predators being deterred by eye contact and aggressive behavior. With the shark preparing for another charge, Michael locked eyes with the beast, shouting defiantly, using his oar to mimic the thrusts of a spear. The shark, perhaps surprised by his audacity, hesitated, circling once more before disappearing into the murky depths of the Zambezi. The immediate danger gone, Michael quickly assessed his situation. His boat had sustained damage, water was seeping in, but it was manageable. He set to work, using his fishing gear to patch the hole temporarily while keeping a wary eye on the water. With the boat stabilized, he began the long and arduous journey back to shore, rowing with all his might, driven by the primal urge to survive. The community responded with relief and awe when Michael's boat finally appeared on the horizon. Rescuers met him halfway, escorting him back to safety. His story, once told, became a legend in the local villages, a tale of man's resilience in the face of nature's raw fury. The shark's presence in the freshwater delta became a topic of much discussion among experts and locals alike. Some speculated climate change and shifting marine patterns led the shark into unfamiliar territory. In response, the community grew more vigilant, adapting their practices to ensure the safety of their fishermen. For Michael, the encounter was transformative. While he returned to fishing, he did so with a newfound respect for the river and its inhabitants. He became an advocate for conservation, urging his community to protect the delicate balance of their natural surroundings. The experience had shown him the river was not just a source of livelihood, but a living entity capable of giving and taking away. His tale of survival spread beyond the local villages, inspiring fear and fascination with the natural world's unpredictability. Once a simple fisherman, Michael symbolized the human spirit's indomitable will to overcome even the most insurmountable challenges. Years later, Michael would often tell his story to wide-eyed listeners, not as a boast, but as a lesson. It is a lesson in respect, resilience, and the understanding that humanity must coexist with nature, not as dominators, but earth stewards. His encounter with the shark in the Zambezi River remained a testament to this delicate balance. This narrative enriched the tapestry of tales woven along the banks of the mighty river. Sarah sat in her office at the Institute for Marine Life in America, poring over the latest research findings on shark behavior. As a marine biologist with a passion for conservation, she had dedicated her career to studying these majestic creatures striving to unravel the mysteries of their behavior and protect their delicate ecosystems. But when her department head approached her with a new assignment, Sarah's excitement quickly turned to trepidation. Her boss demanded she undertake a mission to study the sharks in their natural habitat. Sarah's heart sank at the prospect. She knew firsthand the dangers of working with sharks, their razor-sharp teeth and powerful jaws constantly threatening even the most experienced divers. She protested at the boss, 
letting him know she wasn't fit for such a daring mission. Her department head nodded sympathetically, understanding her concerns. However, the mission being crucial for their research efforts, her expertise in shark behavior makes her the ideal candidate. Despite her reservations, Sarah reluctantly agreed to consider the mission, hoping her department head would understand her decision. But to her dismay, the matter was far from settled. A few days later, Sarah was again summoned to her department head's office. This time, his voice had a sense of urgency as he explained the situation, and he told her she had been chosen to lead the research effort. Sarah's heart sank as she realized that her protests had fallen on deaf ears. She knew she had to accept the assignment, no matter how daunting it seemed. With a heavy heart, Sarah began to prepare for the mission ahead, gathering supplies and reviewing her training for the challenges ahead. Despite her fears, she was determined to approach the mission with caution and professionalism and make the most of the opportunity she had been given. On a crisp morning off the coast of South Africa, Sarah embarked on a research expedition to study great white sharks in their natural environment. Armed with state-of-the-art equipment and a team of seasoned divers, she descended into the shark-infested waters aboard her research submersible, the Ocean Explorer. Sarah's excitement mingled with anticipation as the submersible descended deeper into the abyss. The waters off the coast of South Africa were renowned for their abundance of marine life, and she relished the opportunity to observe these apex predators in their element. Little did she know that her expedition would soon take a terrifying turn. As the ocean explorer reached its target depth, Sarah's trained eyes scanned the surrounding waters for any sign of movement. Minutes stretched into eternity as she waited, her heart pounding with anticipation. And then it happened. A massive shadow emerged from the depths, gliding effortlessly through the water with a grace that belied its immense size. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as she realized she was face to face with a great white shark, the ocean's ultimate predator. With a sense of awe and reverence, Sarah watched as the shark circled closer, its cold, dead eyes fixed upon her with an intensity that sent shivers down her spine. But her wonder quickly turned to horror when the unthinkable happened. In a sudden violent motion, the great white shark lunged at the submersible, its mighty jaws snapping shut on the reinforced hull with a loud clang. Sarah's heart raced as she realized that the predator was now trapped inside the ocean explorer with her its thrashing movements threatening to tear through the metal and seal her fate. Panic surged through Sarah's veins as she frantically assessed her options. The submersible's cramped confines offered little room for maneuverability, and the shark's frenzied movements made every moment a battle for survival. With each passing second, the risk of the predator breaking through the hull grew more imminent. Summoning all her courage, Sarah sprang into action navigating the claustrophobic confines of the submersible with speed and precision. With each movement she could feel the shark's presence looming just beyond the thin metal walls, its primal instincts driving it to seek freedom at any cost. But Sarah refused to let fear dictate her actions. She carefully plotted her escape with nerves of steel, searching for any potential means of outmaneuvering the enraged predator. With quick thinking and steady hands, she activated the submersible's emergency release mechanism, hoping to create a diversion to buy her precious seconds to formulate a plan. Sarah seized the opportunity as the emergency alarms blared and the hatch swung open. She darted out of the submersible, her heart pounding in her chest as she propelled herself toward the relative safety of the open water. Sarah was determined not to become another victim of the ocean's wrath. With every ounce of strength and determination, she pushed herself to the limits, racing toward the surface with a single-minded focus on survival. As she breached the water, gasping for air, Sarah felt a sense of triumph wash over her. As she was pulled aboard the safety of the research vessel, Sarah couldn't help but marvel at the sheer power and unpredictability of the ocean. She had come face to face with the ultimate predator and lived to tell the tale, a survivor of the depths of the sea. But even as she caught her breath and reflected on the harrowing ordeal beneath the waves, Sarah knew that her work was far from over. With renewed determination, she vowed to continue her research and advocacy for the protection of sharks and the delicate ecosystems they inhabit, driven by a profound respect for the ocean and its inhabitants that would stay with her for the rest of her days. Sasha Bennett wasn't just a surfer. In those moments when water and speed and pure instinct collided, 
she wasn't just riding the wave. She was a part of its thundering power. This stretch of Queensland coastline with its hidden coves and fickle tides had been her classroom since she was old enough to hold a board. She knew its moods, its secrets, even its dangers. Today was different. Today, tucked into the curve of the Gold Coast on a blazing May morning in 2004, everything hinged on ambition. Sasha, 17 years old and burning with dreams too big for her little town, was chasing more than just the perfect swell. This was her breakout year. Nationals, sponsorship deals, maybe even a shot at the world tours. She'd make her dad proud and prove to herself that even after her mom's death, she could handle whatever life threw at her. Her practice spot, breakaway point, was a beast even on good days. The kind of place the grizzled veterans liked to test their mettle and where the weekend warriors rarely dared to venture. Sasha thrived on the challenge, the way the currents shifted out here. The way a wave could build into a roaring wall of water in seconds. Of course, with those unpredictable swells came the occasional less welcome visitor. Bull sharks, especially, are drawn by the churned up water and the promise of a meal. Old Maka, the weathered surf shop owner with his missing finger and shark tooth necklace, had wagged a finger at her yesterday, muttering warnings. Sasha hid her shiver of fear with a cheeky grin. She was too strong, fast, and good to become some shark's breakfast. Paddling out this morning, muscles warm and heart pounding, a sliver of unease crept in. It warred with the familiar adrenaline rush. Fear was the enemy, and she'd wrestled it to the ground more times than she could count. Her first few rides were exhilarating. She knew her form was perfect, honed by years of early mornings and relentless practice. Then she saw it. Out on the fringe of her vision, a dark shape arced through the water. It surfaced again, closer this time. That wasn't a dolphin. Too thick, too blunt. The familiar surge of adrenaline turned icy. That shape, that relentless movement was unmistakable. But she was too far out. Too far from the safety of the shore, too far from anyone who could help. And it was getting closer. The world exploded into chaos. One moment Sasha was balanced on her board, scanning for the next wave. The next, the shark erupted from the depths, a torpedo of muscle and teeth. Its massive body knocked her from her board, tumbling into the water. Pain seared through her leg, a fiery ripping sensation. Then the shark was back, pulling her under with horrifying force. Her lungs screamed as the water closed over her head, salt choking her. She glimpsed its open maw through the murky blue, a jagged line of razor-sharp teeth. Sasha clawed and kicked with the primal strength of desperation, but its grip was relentless. Then, as suddenly as it began, the pull eased. She was free, but only for a moment. The shark circled back, blood trailing in the water, its dark eyes cold and fixed on her. Sasha surfaced, gasping and sputtering, her injured leg burning, barely able to keep her head above the water. The beach seemed impossibly far away. She kicked frantically, one-armed, propelled by a surge of fear she'd never known. Her board bobbed nearby, but the shark was between her and her lifeline. She thought of her dad, his tired face etched with worry lines, and a wave of anger surged through her, fueling her determination. Behind her, the monstrous fish turned, beginning another charge. Sasha lunged for her board, ignoring the white-hot pain. The shark closed in, its open jaws a gaping terror. She yanked the board up, a pathetic shield, and braced herself for the impact. There was a splintering crunch and a blinding flash of pain as the shark latched onto the board, tearing a huge chunk away. Sasha, propelled by the force of the attack, found herself airborne for a split second before crashing back into the water a few meters away. The shark circled again, disoriented, and Sasha used the precious seconds to paddle madly towards the distant shore. Her injured leg throbbed with each clumsy stroke. She knew the blood would attract the predator back and knew that time was running out. Every time a ripple broke the surface, her heart hammered a frantic rhythm against her ribs. She imagined those monstrous teeth clamping onto her leg again, the terrible drag into the dark depths. Wave after relentless wave, she pushed on, driven by the raw, desperate need to survive. Her breaths came in ragged gasps as her muscles protested, but she refused to give in. The beach, once a distant smudge, grew closer with agonizing slowness. Her arms felt like lead, her wounded leg a useless weight. Then a glimmer of hope emerged, a figure appeared on the shoreline, waving frantically. A fellow surfer. 
Her voice, raw and weak, barely carried over the sound of the surf, but she screamed for help. The figure plunged into the water, paddling toward her with powerful strokes. With renewed energy, Sasha somehow found the strength to push on. The shark hadn't reappeared, perhaps drawn away by the new presence in its territory. The other surfer reached her, helped her onto his board, and paddled them to safety. As Sasha collapsed on the sand, the sobs came in great shuddering waves mingled with relief. Her leg throbbed relentlessly. The world blurred around her, but she was alive. They'd cheated the ocean, cheated death, and the taste of victory was sharper than the salt water stinging her eyes. In the heart of the vast blue ocean, far from the bustling world above, lies a place known as the Shark Corridor, near Cocos Island, Costa Rica. This remote spot, hidden away from the busy life of cities, is famous for its deep, clear waters and the mysteries that dwell beneath. In 2003, a brave deep-sea diver named Max Johnson decided to explore one of these mysteries, a shipwreck that had long rested in the depths, holding past stories. Max was well prepared for his journey, with his heart full of adventure and his mind curious about the ocean's secrets. He had heard tales of the shipwreck, an old vessel that sank many years ago, now home to various marine life. Max was unaware of the danger lurking in these waters, the oceanic white-tipped sharks, known for their curiosity and boldness. As Max descended into the incredible embracing depths, his eyes were filled with wonder. The shipwreck lay before him like a ghost from another time, its structure covered in colorful corals and surrounded by schools of fish dancing in the water. He moved carefully around the wreck, his flashlight piercing the darkness, revealing hidden treasures and forgotten stories. But as Max explored, he felt a sudden shift in the water. A shadow passed over him, large and ominous. Turning slowly, he faced not just one, but a pack of oceanic white tip sharks. Their sleek bodies circled him, their eyes watching, curious about this intruder in their domain. Max's heart raced. He knew that these waters were home to many sharks, but encountering a pack of oceanic white tips was something he had not anticipated. He remembered the advice he had been given, stay calm, avoid sudden movements, and maintain eye contact with the sharks. Max did his best to follow this advice, keeping his breathing steady as he watched the sharks circle closer. The sharks, intrigued by Max's presence, continued their dance around him. Max, though afraid, was also in awe of these majestic creatures. They moved gracefully, their powerful bodies slicing through the water effortlessly. He knew he must respect these animals, understanding that he was a visitor in their world. Max's fear began to mix with a sense of respect and fascination as the minutes passed. He realized that this encounter, while dangerous, was also a rare opportunity to witness these creatures in their natural habitat. Sensing that Max was not a threat, the oceanic white tips eventually lost interest. They started to drift away one by one back into the blue depths of their ocean home. Max took a deep breath, relieved that the situation had not escalated. He knew he had been lucky. The encounter with the oceanic white tip sharks would stay with him forever, a vivid reminder of the power and mystery of the ocean. Max felt a profound connection to the ocean as he returned to the surface, the shipwreck and the sharks left behind in the deep. He had come seeking adventure and had found so much more, a respect for the delicate balance of life beneath the waves and a story that he would share to remind others of the beauty and dangers that coexist in the deep blue sea. Emerging from the depths, Max felt a mixture of relief and exhilaration. The sunlight welcomed him back, its rays piercing the water's surface, creating a mosaic of light around him. As he boarded the boat, the experience with the oceanic white tip sharks lingered in his mind, a stark reminder of the ocean's unpredictability and the respect it commands. Max knew his story was about survival, understanding, and respecting the natural world. The encounter with the sharks underscored the importance of being prepared and respecting the creatures of the sea. It was a cautionary tale that he was eager to share, hoping to inspire both caution and awe for the ocean's inhabitants. Back on Cocos Island, Max shared his tale with fellow divers and the local community. His story spread, becoming a topic of discussion among those who ventured into the ocean's depths. It served as a reminder of the wonders and dangers beneath the surface urging divers always to be mindful of their surroundings and the creatures they share the waters with. The encounter at the Shark Corridor became more than just a personal experience for Max. 
It was a lesson in coexistence with the ocean's creatures. It reminded everyone that while the sea offers beauty and adventure, it also demands respect and awareness. As the sun set over Cocos Island, Max looked out at the ocean, its vastness holding endless stories yet to be discovered. He will never forget his adventure with the oceanic white-tip sharks. This profound encounter deepened his connection to the marine world and its magnificent, mysterious inhabitants. The turquoise waters of Coral Bay sparkled under the midday sun. It was July 2006 and Emily Peterson found a world away from her usual office bustle in Chicago. This trip to the Bahamas was meant to be her escape. A week filled with sun, sand, and the simple joy of doing nothing. The rum punch she'd been sipping was already making her toes tingle. She could almost feel the tension of the past months melt away. Today she joined a small group for a snorkeling excursion. The reef was a vibrant riot of color teeming with life. Emily felt a giddy sense of freedom. Her usual anxieties washed away in the warm, crystal clear waters. She drifted lazily above brain corals and darting rainbow-hued fish, completely losing herself in the underwater spectacle. Tiger sharks were one of the draw cards of Coral Bay. With their blunt heads and distinctive striped markings, they were known for being both aggressive and curious. Their presence gave the reef an edgy thrill, a reminder of nature's untamed power. Emily had only seen them from a distance in the past, sleek shadows moving beneath the dive boat. Today, though, the guide promised they'd get a closer look. After their snorkeling, the group lounged on the upper deck of their boat, basking in the sun. Emily leaned against the railing, watching the coastline fade until only a thin strip of green marked the distant island. Once exhilarating, the vastness of the open sea now felt a little unsettling. The conversation turned to the tiger sharks, the group sharing a mix of awe and nervous excitement. Suddenly, the engine sputtered and died, and the boat halted. The laughter faded as the crew scrambled, brows furrowing with concern as they swore at the uncooperative machinery. Emily felt a prickle of unease, a flutter of nerves in her stomach. She reassured herself. They had satellite phones, flares, everything they'd need to be safe until help arrived. Still, the endless stretch of blue water suddenly seemed far less inviting. Emily stood at the railing as the crew tinkered and stared into the blue depths. Perhaps naively, she hoped to glimpse one of the tiger sharks, some reassurance that the delay would be worth it in the end. The water was eerily still. Then, a ripple broke the surface a few yards away, followed by another. Adrenaline spiked through her. A fin sliced through the water, smooth and unmistakable. Her heart pounded in her chest. It was enormous, more significant than any shark she had ever seen, even the distant blurs from the boat's safety. The shark circled the boat its fin cutting an ominous path through the water. Emily stared, her mind unable to register the danger, transfixed by the sheer power of the creature. This wasn't a fleeting glimpse, but the full force of an apex predator assessing its options. Then, the shark lunged. Emily barely had time to scream before the water beside her exploded in a surge of foam and teeth. The shark's jaws caught her arm, the immense force dragging her towards the railing. She kicked and thrashed, desperate to free herself, but it was futile. The pain seared through her, white-hot and blinding. The world lurched violently as the boat tilted under her weight. Someone was shouting her name, a distant echo against the roaring in her ears. Emily felt herself slipping and she felt the rough wood of the railing scrape against her skin. She managed to wrench her arm free with one final surge of strength. She hit the water with a gasping cry. The shock of icy water was almost as unbearable as the burning agony in her arm. The shark was mere feet away, its eyes fixed on her. Pure instinct propelled her forward. She flailed wildly, kicking and splashing, desperate to distance herself from those monstrous jaws. The boat was still rocking dangerously. Screams pierced the air, a chaotic mix of terror and frantic yells. Someone threw a life buoy towards her, but it landed agonizingly too far away. She was on her own. The shark circled back. Emily saw the flash of its teeth as it lunged again. She felt a searing pain in her leg, then the terrifying sensation of being pulled underwater. Bubbles escaped her lips as she fought for air, her lungs screaming in protest. But the shark was too strong. Her vision blurred, her struggles growing weaker. Just as darkness threatened to consume her, something shifted. The pressure on her leg eased. 
Through the churning water, she glimpsed the shark retreating. She kicked for the surface, gasping desperately. Strong hands latched onto her, hauling her up. She was dragged across the rocking deck and then shoved roughly inside the cramped cabin. The door slammed shut and Emily found herself in trembling darkness. The only sound of her ragged sobs and the distant cries of the others who had seen what happened, who knew how close she had come to death. Inside, she huddled with two other girls, all sobbing in terrified silence. They pressed themselves against the far wall, as far from the windows as they could manage. Emily clamped her hands over her ears, desperate to block out the horrific sounds, the shouts, the splashing, and the chilling guttural snaps as the shark continued its gruesome feast. Time became a meaningless blur. Each wave that rocked the boat sent a fresh jolt of terror through her. She wanted to vomit, to scream, to disappear. Somehow the hours passed. The screams outside faded, replaced by the lonely sound of lapping water and the harsh cries of seagulls. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an ominous glow through the cabin window. Finally, she heard the distinctive chop of helicopter blades. A flare arched into the twilight sky, and relief washed over her. She wasn't alone anymore. There was hope. Yet as they were lifted from the blood-stained deck of the boat and up into the safety of the helicopter, Emily knew one thing with absolute certainty. She'd carry the memory of those screams and the raw brutality of nature with her for the rest of her life. On a radiant summer day, Bondi Beach, a jewel of Sydney, Australia, buzzed with excitement and the melodious laughter of families enjoying the sun's warmth. The year was 2001, and after months of anticipation, Locals and tourists alike had flocked to the beach to revel in its golden sands and inviting turquoise waters. Among them were Elizabeth Harper, a dedicated marine biologist, and Michael Thompson, a seasoned lifeguard known for his bravery and quick thinking. With her keen interest in marine life, especially sharks, Elizabeth often spent her days at the beach educating the public about marine conservation. On the other hand, Michael watched the beachgoers with a vigilant eye ensuring everyone's safety. The beach was not just a place of leisure, but a community where every individual, from the ice cream vendor to the surf instructors, played a role in creating a harmonious environment. As the day progressed, the beach became a canvas of vibrant beach umbrellas and joyous families building sandcastles, surfers catching the waves and children splashing in the shallows. Unbeknownst to them, a shadow lurked beneath the surface, a giant and unusually aggressive shark drawn closer to the shore by unseen factors, perhaps the warmer waters or the pursuit of prey. The first sign of trouble came as a chilling scream pierced the air. Elizabeth, who collected samples near the water's edge, turned sharply towards the sound. At his post, scanning the water for any signs of distress, Michael spotted a sudden thrashing in the water. Without hesitation, he grabbed his rescue board and plunged into the water. The beach erupted into chaos as more screams filled the air. Parents frantically gathered their children and swimmers raced towards the shore, their hearts pounding with fear. Elizabeth and several other bystanders rushed to assist Michael, who was now fighting to reach a young boy caught in the path of the frenzied shark. In those harrowing moments, the beach transformed from a place of leisure to a scene of desperation and fear. Michael reached the boy, pulling him onto the rescue board just as the shark made another aggressive pass, its dark fin slicing through the water like a blade. Elizabeth coordinated with the lifeguards on the shore to form a human chain, guiding the panicked swimmers to safety. As the attack subsided, the beach fell into a heavy silence, the joyous laughter replaced by sirens as emergency services arrived. The community was shaken, grappling with the reality of the incident. Three lives had been tragically lost in what would be remembered as the five-minute fury. The event highlighted the unpredictable nature of the sea. It sparked a heated debate within the community and beyond about shark conservation versus public safety. Elizabeth and Michael, along with the other rescuers, were hailed as heroes, their actions a testament to the human spirit's courage and solidarity in the face of danger. However, the attack scarred Bondi Beach, a reminder of the delicate balance between humans and nature. As the community began to heal, questions lingered about the future. How could such an incident be prevented? What measures could be taken to ensure the safety of beachgoers without harming the marine ecosystem? The debate continued, but one thing was clear. That day's events would forever change how Bondi Beach viewed its relationship with the sea. 
In the wake of the attack at Bondi Beach, Sydney, the community was enveloped in an atmosphere thick with grief and disbelief. The sun's rays no longer seemed to warm but to cast a spotlight on the tragedy that had unfolded. Eleanor Hayes, another seasoned marine biologist alongside lifeguard Captain James McAllister, spearheaded the risk management response. Their immediate concern was to prevent any more potential attacks and to understand the aggressive behavior of the shark, which was unlike anything documented in Australian waters. The council convened an emergency meeting, gathering input from experts like Elizabeth Michael, local authorities, and community leaders. They decided on a multifaceted approach to address the immediate fear and the long-term implications of the incident. Surveillance drones were deployed to monitor the waters around Bondi, and barriers were erected to shield against possible future shark intrusions. Once teeming with laughter and the sound of crashing waves, the beach was now a scene of somber activity as measures were implemented. James and his team of lifeguards underwent specialized training to handle such rare but dangerous situations. The bravery and quick thinking of the team at Bondi Beach had saved lives, but the loss of three beachgoers weighed heavily on their hearts. In their honor, the community organized a vigil on the sands of Bondi where people came together to mourn, remember, and stand in solidarity. The names of the lost, Michael Davidson, Sofia Rodriguez, and Liam Chen, were etched onto a memorial plaque, ensuring their memory would forever be part of Bondi's history. Amid the sorrow, a heated debate emerged within the community and online forums. Some voices called for culling the shark population around Bondi, arguing it was necessary for human safety. Others, including Eleanor, advocated for a more compassionate approach, emphasizing the importance of understanding shark behavior and investing in non-lethal control measures. The tense discourse reflected the broader global conversation about wildlife conservation and human coexistence. As weeks turned into months, Bondi Beach slowly began to reclaim its identity as a beloved summer destination. The barriers and surveillance technology proved effective, with no further incidents reported. Educational programs about marine life and safety were introduced, fostering a new level of respect and awareness among the beachgoers. The community had faced its darkest hour with unity and resolve, emerging more robust and connected to the natural world. The story became a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the complexity of nature, and the delicate balance between fear and understanding. It reminded everyone that the ocean's depths hold mysteries and challenges, requiring respect, caution, and most importantly, a commitment to coexistence. For years, Mike had been a renowned wildlife capture specialist, traveling the world to capture exotic animals for zoos, research institutes, and conservation efforts. From the dense jungles of Africa to the icy tundras of the Arctic, he had faced countless challenges and dangers in pursuit of his quarry. But the task before him was perhaps the most daunting yet, capturing a great white shark for research purposes. He knew capturing a great white shark would not be easy, but he was up for the challenge. After all, he had conquered the wilds of the forest and the ocean's depths before. This would be no different. With a sense of determination, Mike accepted the assignment, his mind already racing with plans and strategies for accomplishing the task at hand. He knew capturing a great white shark would require careful planning and precision, but he was confident in his abilities as a hunter and tracker. In the following days, Mike spared no expense in preparing for the mission. He assembled a team of experienced divers and researchers, each hand-picked for their expertise and dedication to the task. Finally, the day of the expedition arrived, and Mike and his team set out into the open ocean, their sights set on the elusive great white shark. For days, they searched tirelessly, scouring the depths for any sign of their prey. But their patience began to wear thin as the days turned into weeks. Just when all hope was lost, a breakthrough came, a sighting of a massive great white shark prowling the waters off the coast of Florida. With renewed determination, Mike and his team sprang into action, setting their plan into motion with precision and skill. Using a combination of bait and underwater traps, they lured the shark in close, their hearts pounding with anticipation as they watched from the safety of their boat. And then, in a flash of movement, the shark took the bait, its massive form surging through the water with breathtaking speed. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, their patience was rewarded. 
With a mighty pull, the trap was triggered and the crew erupted into cheers as they reeled in their prize. A massive great white shark thrashing wildly against the confines of its captivity. For a moment, Mike felt a surge of triumph coursing through his veins as he gazed upon the creature he had spent so long pursuing. But his victory was short-lived. As the crew worked to secure the shark for transport, disaster struck. With a sudden lurch, the beast broke free from its restraints, its mighty jaws snapping shut with deadly force. Panic swept through the crew as they scrambled to regain control, but it was too late. In a swift motion, the great white shark turned the tables, its gaze locking onto Mike with an intensity that sent shivers down his spine. Mike felt the cold grip of fear tightening around his heart for the first time. He had spent years hunting sharks, but now he found himself facing the very creature he had sought to capture. As the great white shark circled closer, its predatory instincts kicking into overdrive, Mike realized the gravity of his situation. He was no longer the hunter, he was hunted. Desperation clawed at Mike's mind as he searched for a way to escape the jaws of his trap. But with each passing moment, the shark drew closer, its razor-sharp teeth gleaming in the fading light. In a last-ditch effort, Mike reached for his harpoon gun, hoping to fend off the creature long enough to make his escape. Mike's heart raced as he gripped his harpoon gun, his fingers trembling with adrenaline-fueled anticipation. The monstrous shadow of the shark loomed beneath him, its dark form cutting through the azure depths of the ocean like a predator on the hunt. With a silent prayer, he aimed carefully, his muscles tensing as he prepared to strike. With a swift motion, he released the harpoon, his aim true as it sliced through the water with deadly accuracy. The barbed tip pierced the shark's head, embedding itself a little bit deep within the creature's flesh. Mike's heart soared with triumph, relief flooding through him as he watched the shark thrash in agony. But his elation was short-lived as the shark's frenzied movements turned towards him with sudden, ferocious intent. Before he could react, he was struck by the full force of the creature's wrath, his body spiraling through the water like a rag doll caught in a maelstrom. The impact was brutal, pain searing through him as he fought to maintain consciousness. The world spun around him in a dizzying blur as he struggled to orient himself amidst the chaos. Through the haze of agony, he felt hands grasping him, pulling him toward the surface with desperate urgency. Gasping for air, he was hauled aboard the crew's vessel, his body limp and battered from the ordeal. Panic surged through the crew as they worked frantically to revive him, their shouts echoing over the tumultuous waves. Time seemed to blur as Mike hovered on the brink of consciousness, the line between reality and delirium wavering precariously. But through the fog of pain, one thought burned with unwavering clarity. The harpoon, its poison coursing through the shark's veins, rendering the creature weak and vulnerable. As the crew secured the weakened shark for research, Mike's mind raced with a mixture of triumph and disbelief. Never had he imagined that his weapon of choice would backfire so spectacularly, endangering his own life in the process. Yet amidst the chaos and uncertainty, a glimmer of hope flickered. The knowledge that his actions had not been in vain. Despite the harrowing ordeal, Mike emerged from the depths with a newfound respect for the power of the ocean and its inhabitants. He knew that he would carry the scars of that fateful encounter for the rest of his days, a testament to the dangers that lurked beneath the surface. The night air held the salty tang of the open ocean. Off the coast of Victoria, where the bay strait churned with restless energy, a lone boat bobbed under the vast expanse of the night sky. It was August 2009, and for Elias Walker, this was where the world made sense. Elias wasn't a weekend angler seeking easy trophies for bragging rights. He was one of the old breeds, with a weathered face lined with more stories than smiles. Fishing wasn't a hobby for him. It was in his blood, a legacy from his grandfather and generations before. This was the hour he loved best, the quiet broken only by the waves, the distant cries of seabirds, and the comforting rumble of his boat's engine. He'd left the crowded docks far behind, seeking the deep waters where the considerable fish lurked. The riskier the spot, the greater the reward. Some called him crazy, a man pushing his luck too far. He just shrugged. He was against nature, and nobody ever won against the ocean. As he said his lines tonight, Eli felt a tingle of anticipation. 
This wasn't just about putting food on the table. His wife Sarah and their two boys depended on his catch. But that wasn't what drove him deep down. He craved the fight. The thrill of pitting himself against unseen monsters lurking below. He knew the dangers. The sudden storms, the rogue waves, the creatures most didn't believe existed in these waters. Tiger sharks were one of those creatures. They favored warmer climates, but fishermen whispered stories and sightings of solitary beasts venturing south in search of prey. The tales hinted at myth mixed, with terror, fishermen disappearing without a trace and battles fought and lost in the darkness. It was a fear Eli shoved into the deepest recesses of his mind. Tonight, he was focused on the task at hand. He knew his lines, his knots, his boat, and his own strength. His first few catches were decent, snapper, a plump flathead, good eating, good money at the market. But Eli was restless, hungry for something more. Shifting to a sturdier rod, heavier bait, he cast out and sank back against the railing. The distant lights of the shore were a faint shimmer on the horizon. The time he was dissolved into the boat's rocking and the sea's endless rhythm. It was a trance-like, meditative, until his line tightened with a force that jolted him from his thoughts. The line whipped from his hand, sizzling with friction and digging into his skin. Eli braced himself against the railing, shock turning to grim determination. This was no ordinary fish. This was the fight he'd craved, and it might just be the one that killed him. Hauling back on the rod was like pulling against a truck. The unseen creature on the other end surged and dived, a monstrous force straining his line to the breaking point. It was too powerful to haul on board. Instead, he'd have to tire it out, let it thrash, and fight until it weakened. It was a dangerous gamble, but Eli had gambled with his life before. Hours slipped by in a haze of agony and constant battle. Liam's hands were blistered, his muscles ached, but he persevered with the stubborn resilience typical of his kind. Suddenly, the creature broke through the surface its silver form flashing. Eli's stomach churned. Tiger shark. Its huge eyes glinted in the moonlight, easily twice the size Liam had ever encountered. He hadn't hooked this monster. It had hooked him. One wrong move and it would drag him overboard and into those gaping jaws lined with hundreds of razor-sharp teeth. He cursed himself for his recklessness, for chasing this fight too far. Sarah's worried face flashed in his mind, then the laughter of his boys on their last fishing trip. If he died tonight, they'd be left with nothing but an empty boat and whispers of a man lost to the sea. The shark lunged once more closer now, a terrifying show of strength and pure malice. It was assessing him, not just as prey, but as a challenger to its domain. Eli knew he couldn't cut the line. The thrashing hook could catch on his clothes and become a deadly weight. He braced himself, waiting for the next surge. It came with brutal force. The shark tore the rod from his hands, hurtling him towards the edge with bone-jarring force. Just as his torso hit the railing, something snagged at his leg, then searing pain. The shark had tangled in the line, sinking its teeth into his calf with a vice-like grip. Instinct took over. Eli grabbed the rope, hauling himself upwards. Pain seared through him, but he clung on, his weight creating tension that pulled the thrashing shark partially aboard. In frenzied desperation, he snatched up a discarded tackle knife. The next few minutes were a blur. Out of its element, the shark snapped and thrashed, creating chaos. Eli aimed blindly, stabbing at its thick belly again and again. The water around them turned red, a sickening mix of seawater and blood. Then it was over. The shark, its relentless energy finally depleted, went still. Eli collapsed, trembling, his leg throbbing, his breath ragged gasps against the quiet lap of waves. Only as the first gray light of dawn crept over the ocean did he cut himself free from the line and limp towards the controls. The boat lurched forward, leaving the shark carcass bobbing in its wake. Eli didn't look back. Instead, he steered towards the shore, the pain fading against determination. He had survived, but the experience would mark him forever. Once his playground, the ocean now held a darkness he hadn't known before. That night, he made a silent promise. No more solo excursions. No more seeking out the monsters of the deep. Some challenges weren't worth the price, and a man should know when the sea had won the round. In the sunny town of New Smyrna Beach, Florida, where the sand sparkles like tiny jewels under the vast blue sky, a day at the beach was about to turn into an unforgettable adventure for Emma Thompson. The year was 2001. 
and the beach, known for its gentle waves and friendly locals, was bustling with families and friends soaking up the sun's warmth. Emma, a kind-hearted beachgoer who loves the ocean, decided to dip in the shallow waters to cool off from the heat. With her short, light brown hair tied back and her blue swimsuit hugging her closely, she waded into the clear, refreshing water, laughing and splashing around without a care. New Smyrna Beach, celebrated for its beauty, also held secrets beneath its waves. It was a habitat for marine life, including the majestic yet misunderstood tiger shark. Unknown to many, these creatures wandered into shallower waters, drawn by curiosity and searching for food. As Emma swam, enjoying the soothing embrace of the ocean, an unexpected shadow approached. A tiger shark, intrigued by the splashing, ventured closer to the shore than usual. In a swift moment, the shark mistook Emma for prey, resulting in a quick but terrifying encounter. Emma felt a sharp tug at her leg, and she knew immediately she was not alone. Fighting the panic that surged through her, Emma remembered the advice she had heard about staying calm during a shark encounter. She resisted the urge to thrash wildly, knowing it could provoke the shark further. With a surge of courage, she gently pushed the shark away, and to her relief it swam off into the deeper waters, leaving her in a state of shock but alive. Emma hurried back to the shore, her leg bearing marks of the encounter, a few scratches and a bite that, while scary, was not life-threatening. The beachgoers rushed to her aid, wrapping her in towels and offering comfort. The local lifeguards responded quickly, providing first aid and ensuring she was not in grave danger. This incident, while minor, sparked a wave of concern throughout the new Smyrna Beach community. Emma's story spread quickly, raising questions and fears about the safety of swimming in these waters. They are known for their beauty, but are now reminded of their hidden risks. Once buzzing with the carefree joy of beach activities, the community found itself at the heart of a meaningful conversation. Talks about shark safety measures, awareness programs, and the coexistence with the ocean's creatures became the forefront of discussions. The local news covered Emma's story, urging the community to educate themselves on staying safe while enjoying their beloved beach's natural wonders. Though shaken by the experience, Emma was at the center of this newfound awareness. Her encounter with the tiger shark, a moment of fear and bravery, catalyzed change. The people of New Smyrna Beach began to look at the ocean with a new respect, understanding the importance of harmony with the marine life that called it home. As the sun set on New Smyrna Beach, casting a golden glow over the sand and sea, the community knew this was a turning point. It was a reminder of the delicate balance between enjoying nature's beauty and respecting the creatures that dwell within it. Emma's ordeal was not just a story of survival, but a lesson in coexistence marking the beginning of a new chapter for New Smyrna Beach and its residents. Following Emma Thompson's close encounter with a tiger shark at New Smyrna Beach, Florida, the community's initial shock and fear gradually transformed into a collective call to action. Residents previously unaware of the intricacies of shark behavior and the statistical rarity of shark attacks began to educate themselves and each other. 2001 became a pivotal moment for the town marking a shift towards increased safety and understanding of the marine environment. Inspired by the community's eagerness to learn and adapt, local authorities initiated educational programs focused on marine life, especially sharks. These programs were designed to demystify the creatures of the deep, explaining their importance in the ocean's ecosystem and the real risks they pose to humans. Workshops and seminars were held, where experts shared tips on how to stay safe while swimming, such as avoiding swimming at dawn or dusk, keeping close to shore, and staying in groups. Emma, her spirit undiminished by the incident, became an advocate for ocean safety and conservation. Now known by everyone in the town, her story was a powerful reminder of the respect the ocean demands. She worked alongside local wildlife conservationists to help spread awareness emphasizing that the ocean was home to many and that humans were merely visitors. The local schools incorporated ocean safety into their curriculum, teaching children from a young age about the wonders and dangers of the sea. Emma often visited these schools, sharing her experience and the lessons she learned, turning her ordeal into a positive force for education and change. As summer approached, the beaches of New Smyrna Beach saw the implementation of new safety measures. Lifeguards were provided with additional training on how to handle potential shark encounters. 
They were equipped with drones to monitor the waters for any unusual activity. Signage was erected along the beach, offering guidance on shark safety and reminding beachgoers of the simple steps to reduce the risk of an encounter. The community's efforts were met with positive results. The following summer passed without incident, and the beach again became a bustling hub of joy and laughter. Families returned to the sand and sea, now armed with knowledge and a more profound respect for the marine life that shared their beloved beach. Emma's courage and the community's response became a model for other coastal towns facing similar challenges. New Smyrna Beach was praised for its proactive stance on coexistence with nature, setting an example for how communities can adapt to live safely alongside the natural world. Years later, Emma still walks the beach, her gaze often drifting to the horizon where the ocean meets the sky. The incident with the tiger shark, while a terrifying moment in her life, had given her a purpose. She had helped foster a community that valued safety, education, and respect for all life forms. The tiger shark, once a symbol of fear, had become a symbol of unity and strength for the people of New Smyrna Beach. They had learned to live harmoniously with the ocean, embracing its mysteries with caution and respect. Emma's tale of survival and transformation remained a testament to the power of community and the enduring bond between humans and the natural world. The California sun beat down on the calm waters of Moonlight Bay. It was a crisp September morning in 2001, and Mia Bennett had no better place to be. An upcoming swimming competition dominated her thoughts. This wasn't just any race. It was the regional qualifier, a stepping stone towards her ultimate dream of the Olympics. Mia was relentless in her pursuit. The pool was her sanctuary and the rhythmic strokes and the burn of exertion were a form of meditation. Hours spent training had honed her body into a streamlined weapon, propelling her through the water with power and grace. People called her the little fish, a nod to her slight build and relentless pursuit of those precious extra seconds separating victory from mere participation. Out in the open ocean, training took on a new edge. She was acutely aware of being out of her usual controlled environment. Even in the calm, protected waters of the bay, the vastness of the sea instilled a sense of respectful caution. But there was a thrill to it, too, knowing she was pushing her limits, testing herself in a way the pool never could. Mako sharks were a known presence along this stretch of coastline. They were drawn to the deep drop-offs outside the bay, seeking larger prey. Mia had seen them occasionally, ghostly flashes in the blue depths. The fastest sharks in the ocean fascinated her as much as they instilled a certain primal unease. Today, her coach followed alongside in a small boat, ready to intervene if necessary. It was reassuring, but a small part of Mia resented the intrusion, craving the solitude of this open water swim. Today's session was about endurance, not speed. Mia settled into a steady rhythm, sinking her breath with the movement of her body. She'd swum far further out than usual, the distant shore just a thin line on the horizon. The silence was profound, broken only by the soft slap of her arms against the water and the rhythmic whoosh of her breath. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed a flicker of movement in the depths. Her pulse quickened. It's probably just a dolphin, a common sight out here. But the shape moved again, large and purposeful. A shard of unease pricked at her, but Mia pushed it down. Shadows wouldn't spook her. She was safe. Her coach was nearby, and focusing on fear was a surefire way to lose your rhythm. Determined, she swam on. The flicker under the surface grew larger. Mia forced herself to keep swimming, willing it to be a trick of the light, some harmless sea creature. But deep down, the dread was gnawing at her. This shape was too fast, too determined in its approach. Then it surged from the depths with terrifying speed. The Mako shark hit her from below, a brutal explosion of pain and force. Her scream was cut off as the water choked her. She thrashed, but the shark had a firm grip on her leg, its teeth tearing into flesh and muscle. The world turned red as her blood mingled with the seawater. Blind panic threatened to consume her. The shark was immense, its blunt head and dark eyes chillingly focused. Mia couldn't break free. Each thrash of the shark's body pulled her further beneath the surface, darkness closing in around her. She kicked wildly with her remaining leg, her lungs screaming for air. A primal instinct took over as she clawed desperately at the shark's rough skin. Her fingers found an eye and she gouged it with all her might. 
The shark flinched, its grip momentarily loosening. It was enough. Mia lunged toward the surface, gasping raggedly as her head broke free of the water. She caught a glimpse of her coach, his face a mask of horror, before the shark dragged her under again. The world became a dizzying swirl of pain and choking salt water. She was fading, the relentless assault finally overwhelming her strength. Then, through the haze, she heard the roar of the boat's engine. The shark, distracted, released its grip. Mia kicked upwards, a final surge toward the blessed light above. Hands grasped her, hauling her unceremoniously into the boat. Pain washed over her in tidal waves as rough cloth was pressed against her mangled leg. Someone was yelling, her coach shouting instructions. The world dimmed around the edges, and Mia surrendered to the comforting oblivion of unconsciousness. When awareness returned, it was in the sterile surroundings of a hospital room. The smell of antiseptic hung heavy in the air, a sharp counterpoint to the throbbing pain in her mangled leg. Her swimming career was over before it had truly begun. Grief hit her hard, a relentless tide of despair threatening to crush her spirit. But within the darkness, a flicker of defiance began to grow. She had survived, a brutal reminder of the ocean's power, yes, but also a testament to her own will to live. The recovery was long and agonizing surgeries, grueling rehabilitation, learning how to navigate life with a prosthetic. There were moments when she wanted to give up to retreat into bitterness and resentment. But the image of that vast blue expanse of the struggle in its depths gave her an unexpected focus. She would not let this define her. Instead, she turned her attention to ocean conservation and advocated for shark protection and awareness. Her story became one of resilience, the pool had been her first arena, but her true impact would be felt far beyond its chlorinated boundaries. On the pristine shores of Rangali Island, Maldives, Julia, and Michael Thompson stood hand in hand, gazing out at the endless expanse of turquoise waters that stretched before them. The newlyweds had chosen this secluded paradise for their honeymoon, where they could celebrate the beginning of their lives together away from the hustle and bustle of the world. The island with its white sandy beaches and tranquil waters seemed the perfect backdrop for their love story. With her radiant smile and eyes full of dreams, Julia had imagined this moment for months. The wedding had been a whirlwind of joy and celebration. Still in the quiet serenity of the Maldives, it was here that she looked forward to spending uninterrupted time with Michael. In turn, he was captivated by the beauty of their surroundings and the happiness that sparkled in Julia's eyes. They were young, in love, and beginning a promising future together. The first few days of their honeymoon were filled with the simple pleasures of island life. They explored the vibrant coral reefs teeming with colorful fish, relaxed on the beach under the shade of palm trees, and enjoyed romantic dinners under the stars. Life couldn't be more perfect, However, the tranquility of their idyllic retreat was about to be shattered. On a day that began like any other, with the sun casting a golden glow over the island, Michael suggested they swim in the clear, calm waters off the beach. Swimming had always been one of Michael's passions, a joy he was eager to share with Julia. As they waded into the warm ocean, laughter and splashes filled the air, the couple reveling in the sheer delight of the moment. They swam further from the shore, enchanted by the underwater world that unfolded around them. Julia, a bit more cautious, stayed close to Michael, her confidence buoyed by his presence. Without warning, the unthinkable happened. A swift and menacing shadow loomed beneath the surface, a shark drawn to the shallows in search of prey. In a split second of horror, it attacked its target, Michael, who was furthest from the shore. Julia's screams pierced the air as she witnessed the attack, her heart racing with fear and disbelief. The crystal clear waters around them turned dark with blood as she frantically swam towards Michael, desperate to help him. But the shark, having inflicted a fatal wound, disappeared as quickly as it had appeared. The beach, once a haven of peace and happiness, became chaotic. Lifeguards and fellow tourists rushed to their aid, pulling Michael's lifeless body from the water. Julia, in shock, could barely comprehend the sudden devastating turn their honeymoon had taken. As the sun set on Rangali Island that day, the joy and love that had brought Julia and Michael to its shores were overshadowed by grief and tragedy. The attack, a rare occurrence in the tranquil waters of the Maldives, left the island community in shock and prompted an immediate investigation into the circumstances surrounding the incident. 
For Julia, the loss of Michael was an unimaginable blow. The days that followed were a blur of tears, questions, and the unbearable weight of grief. She grappled with the reality of returning home alone. Her dreams of a future with Michael shattered instantly. The investigation into the attack offered little solace as it could not bring back what she had lost. As the island returned to its peaceful routine, Julia faced the daunting task of dealing with her grief and trauma. While comforting, the support of family and friends could not fill the void left by Michael's absence. She struggled to find meaning in a world that had taken away her partner, her love, and her hope for the future. The story of Julia and Michael's honeymoon in the Maldives, marked by tragedy and loss, serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life. It explores the depths of grief and the strength required to face a future forever altered by a moment of terror. As Julia begins her healing journey, she carries with her the memories of the love she and Michael shared, a love that remains unbroken despite the tragedy. In the quiet aftermath of tragedy, Julia found solace in the beauty that had once been the backdrop of her deepest joy, and then her most profound sorrow. She chose to honor Michael's memory by embracing life as he wanted, full of love, passion, and the pursuit of happiness despite the pain. With time, the ocean that took so much from her also offered healing, its vastness a reminder of the endless possibilities ahead. Julia's journey through grief towards acceptance became a testament to their undying love, a promise kept to live fully, not just for herself but for Michael too. In doing so, she found a way to move forward, her heart forever carrying their love and dreams, a beacon of hope in the face of life's unpredictable tides. Tom leaned back in his chair, the soft glow of the computer screen casting shadows across his face. For years, he had been one of Hollywood's go-to underwater videographers, his name synonymous with breathtaking aquatic cinematography. From dazzling coral reefs to the depths of the abyss, Tom had captured it all on film, earning accolades and acclaim from critics and audiences alike. But when he received information about his latest assignment, a chill ran down his spine. He had been tasked with filming great white sharks in their natural habitat for an upcoming docuseries, which filled him with excitement and trepidation. As he read through the briefing notes, Tom couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. Unlike his previous projects, this one would require him to rely solely on his skills as a filmmaker, with no special effects or CGI to enhance the footage. It was a daunting prospect. For days, Tom wrestled with his fears, the image of a massive great white shark looming large in his mind. He knew the dangers of working with these apex predators, their razor-sharp teeth and lightning-fast reflexes posing a constant threat to even the most experienced divers. But he also understood the importance of the project, a chance to shed light on the misunderstood creatures that stalk the ocean's depths. With a deep breath, Tom made a decision. He would face his fears head-on, diving into the heart of the unknown with courage and determination. Armed with his camera and a steely resolve, he set out to capture the beauty and majesty of the great white shark like never before. Tom's heart pounded as he descended into the ocean's murky depths, his camera rig securely fastened to his body. The anticipation of capturing footage of great white sharks in their natural habitat was exhilarating, but he knew the risks too well. As an experienced underwater videographer, Tom had encountered many challenges beneath the waves, but nothing could prepare him for what was about to unfold. The ocean floor stretched before him, a surreal landscape of vibrant corals and darting fish. Tom carefully maneuvered through the water, his camera rolling, capturing every mesmerizing detail. But his sense of wonder quickly turned to alarm when he spotted the unmistakable silhouette of a massive great white shark gliding effortlessly through the water. Instinct kicked in as Tom adjusted his camera settings, determined to document this rare encounter. He had studied these apex predators for years, fascinated by their power and grace. But as the shark drew nearer, Tom felt a surge of adrenaline course through his veins. He knew he had to be cautious and respectful of the animal's territory. While he was capturing all these videos, one of the sharks got entangled with cables from his underwater camera rig. This is synonymous with being captured in a net. This shark wriggled with all its might, and Tom, who had strapped the wire on his body, suffered the consequence. Panic flooded his mind as he tried to escape the wriggling force, but it was far from over. 
With a violent jerk, Tom was dragged into the darkness below, his vision clouded by a whirlwind of bubbles and debris. As he plummeted more profoundly into the abyss, Tom's thoughts raced. He struggled to free himself from the wild creature, but its force was immense. When he discovered that his air supply dwindled with each passing second and the pressure of the ocean bearing down on him, Tom knew he had to make a quick decision, or else he'd die due to loss of oxygen. Desperate, he reached for his utility knife, frantically slashing at the tangled mass of cables ensnaring him. But the shark lurked in the shadows, its presence ever ominous. Tom could feel its cold gaze upon him, a primal instinct urging him to fight or flee. With renewed determination, he hacked away at the cables, his lungs burning for precious oxygen. Tom's chest heaved with exertion as he trod water, scanning the horizon for any sign of the great white shark. The adrenaline coursing through his veins masked the pain radiating from his limbs, a testament to his sheer will to survive. But even as he fought to catch his breath, he couldn't shake the feeling of being hunted. Minutes stretched into eternity as Tom waited, his senses on high alert for any sudden movement beneath the waves. The ocean churned with an eerie stillness, starkly contrasting the chaos unfolding moments before. But just as he began to hope for a reprieve, a shadow loomed beneath him, dark and foreboding. With a sinking heart, Tom realized that the great white shark had returned, drawn by the scent of blood and the promise of prey. Panic threatened to overwhelm him again, but he forced himself to remain calm and reason in the face of imminent danger. Drawing upon his years of experience, Tom remembered the cardinal rule of encountering sharks, never show fear. With this mantra echoing in his mind, he locked eyes with the predator below, willing himself to appear confident and unyielding. For a tense moment, the shark hovered just below the surface, its gaze piercing through the depths with an unnerving intensity. Tom held his breath, ready to react at a moment's notice. But then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the shark veered away, disappearing into the depths once more. Relief washed over Tom in a wave of gratitude mingled with profound awe for the creatures that roamed these waters. Despite the harrowing encounter, he couldn't deny the beauty and majesty of the ocean and its inhabitants. With trembling hands, Tom checked his camera, relieved to find it still intact despite its ordeal. The footage captured would serve as a testament to his bravery and resilience, a reminder of the thin line between life and death beneath the waves. As he began the ascent back to the surface, Tom couldn't help but reflect on the fragility of human existence in the face of nature's raw power. But he also felt a newfound sense of purpose, a determination to continue exploring the ocean's mysteries, undeterred by the dangers within its depths. With each stroke of his weary limbs, Tom moved closer to the surface, towards the light and safety that awaited him above. And though the great white shark memory would haunt his dreams for years to come, he knew that he had faced his fears and emerged victorious, a true survivor of the depths of terror. Some men chase storms. Liam Carter chased the ocean secrets. Not the tourist trap reefs with their gaudy fish and selfie-taking snorkelers, but the places where light faltered and the creatures of the deep held dominion. Places like the Devil's Lair, a maze of underwater caves off the coast of New South Wales. It was June 2005, a Tuesday stolen from his work as a marine biologist and a perfect morning for a solo dive to fuel his obsession. Mornings in the lab were a dull ache. Surrounded by students buzzing with youthful enthusiasm, he felt a pang of the forgotten adventurer within. His work wasn't behind a microscope. It was out there, where the rules of nature were written in salt and blood, where the line between predator and prey blurred with the currents. Cave diving was his drug that weightless freedom mixed with a shot of pure, heart-pounding terror. It was where he felt truly alive. Sarah, his girlfriend with her sensible job and worried frown, never entirely understood. He'd tried to explain, watching her eyes cloud over with concern he couldn't wholly dismiss. He'd tell her it wasn't about defying death. It was about feeling more alive than he ever did on dry land. She loved him, honestly. But some part of him, the part the ocean understood couldn't be tamed by quiet dinners and promises of safety. This morning, while his colleagues prepped for lectures, he slipped away. The salty tang of the ocean greeted him like an old friend. Gearing up was a ritual, 
checking the seals, listening to the hiss of the regulator, and methodically preparing a way to calm the thrill coursing through his veins. The Devil's Lair had a reputation for a reason. Tiger sharks, nasty buggers with teeth like steak knives, patrolled these waters. Inside the caves, they were less likely. Still, the knowledge lurked beneath his bravado like a riptide, the possibility of a sleek shadow emerging from the darkness. The first descent was always a baptism. His city skin, softened by too much time under fluorescent lights, prickled with the change in pressure. Down here, his dive computer was his lifeline, beeping out the dwindling oxygen, his only guard against the silent crushing death of an empty tank. His light pierced the gloom, dancing off the smooth rock walls. The lair was a marvel, each passage carved by time by the relentless power of the ocean. A school of startled fish shimmered past, nervous prey echoing his heightened senses. The further he ventured, the deeper the thrill. Out here he was an explorer, a modern Magellan facing the unknown, armed with only his tanks and a thirst for the unexplored. The first hint wasn't a sight but a change of pressure. Liam felt something off in the water, a small change that made his skin tingle. He stopped, shining his light into the dark. Then he caught sight of movement at the corner of his eye, a quick glimpse of a powerful tail vanishing around a cave corner. Tiger Shark. His heart hammered in his chest. Panic threatened to overwhelm him, but years of diving kicked in. Stay calm, his inner voice commanded. Assess, don't react. The shark was big, longer than him, but here, in the dark confines, its size was a disadvantage. The cave was his territory now, the twisty passages a maze he knew better than any predator. He pressed himself against a rocky outcropping and waited. There, it circled back, likely drawn by the disturbance in the water and the beam of his light. Its pale belly gleamed in the momentary illumination, rows of jagged teeth visible in its gaping maw. Liam held his breath, willing himself to become invisible. The shark cruised past, slow and deliberate, its cold eyes mere inches from where he hid. It was a territorial display, a warning. This was its kingdom. A surge of adrenaline flooded Liam's system, a strange mix of terror and the thrill of facing such raw power. He had to get out of there, but retreating the way he'd come was out of the question. The shark would be waiting. The cave system might offer an alternative route. Taking a calculated risk, Liam ventured deeper into the maze, his light cutting a path through the darkness. Time was his enemy now, each breath taking him closer to the point where his tanks would be empty and his lungs would scream for air. His computer beeped an urgent warning, its flashing numbers a grim countdown. If he didn't surface within minutes, no rescue would be possible. He knew the stats, knew how quickly a dive could turn deadly. He thought of Sarah, her face etched in his memory, and the familiar wave of anger mixed with guilt surged through him. He'd been reckless and selfish. Another shift in pressure, stronger than before, and the smell of fish in the water grew stronger. The shark had returned, circling closer. Liam squeezed into a crevice, trying to become one with the rock, praying the shark would pass him by. He wasn't a meal, he was an intruder. Sharks didn't attack for fun, did they? A jolt ran through him as something massive bumped the rock face. The shark knew he was there. A flurry of sand and silt reduced visibility to nothing. Fear choked him as blind panic threatened to take over. He couldn't die here, not in this dark, water-filled tomb. Fighting down the terror, he forced himself to focus. Think. Then an idea, desperate yet his only chance. Pulling a dive knife from his belt, he carved deliberate scratches on the rock, sending vibrations through the water. It was a long shot. Maybe the shark would sense this as coming from a rival, another predator to be wary of. Minutes passed, each agonizingly slow and marked by the beep of his dive computer. Then, miraculously, the pressure eased. The shark was gone, perhaps lured away by the deception. Liam, weak with relief, propelled himself towards the surface. His lungs burned and spots danced before his eyes, but he was driven by a frantic, primal need to breathe. Bursting through the surface into the sunlight felt like a rebirth. He gasped for air, his body trembling. The ordeal wasn't over. He had to get back to shore before his tanks were entirely depleted. Still, in this moment of survival, he felt a fierce, undeniable gratitude for every breath. Liam clung to a nearby rock formation, his heart hammering a frantic rhythm against his ribs. He had cheated death, but the victory was fragile. 
His air was nearly gone, and the boat that would have been a safeguard was probably miles away. With a shaky hand, Liam activated his emergency surface marker sausage, a bright orange inflatable tube that signaled distress. It bobbed on the surface, a beacon in the vast blue. Then hope flickered on the horizon. A fishing boat drawn by the marker changed course and churned towards him. He weakly waved his arms, praying they saw him. Minutes stretched into eternity, but the boat closed the distance. Strong hands pulled him aboard, hauling him back from the watery depths. As they checked his vitals and wrapped him in warm blankets, Liam breathed in relief. He was alive, scarred, changed, but alive. The news of his near-death experience spread like wildfire. The local papers dubbed him the cave diver who cheated death. Sarah rushed to his side, her relief laced with anger. He held her close, apologizing for the fear he'd caused. Liam continued to dive, but now he was with a team, with a buddy, and with a healthy fear that kept him sharp. The thrill was still there, but tempered by a newfound appreciation for life, for the salty kiss of the sea on his face, and for the woman who worried but loved him enough to let him chase his dreams, even the ones that danced with danger. In the serene waters surrounding the Fiji Islands, nestled in the vast expanse of the South Pacific, Olivia Harper dedicated her life to unraveling the ocean's mysteries. As a marine researcher, she spent her days in the open water, surrounded by the vibrant life that thrived beneath the waves. The year was 2005, and Olivia's latest project focused on the behavior of marine life in these pristine waters, a task that brought her face to face with the ocean's most magnificent creatures. On a bright sunny morning, Olivia set out on her boat. Equipped with her research tools and a heart full of curiosity, the clear blue waters of Fiji offered visibility for miles, a perfect condition for her studies. Diving into the ocean, she was greeted by a ballet of colorful fish and corals, a spectacle that never ceased to amaze her. As Olivia ventured further recording her observations, she noticed a shadow looming in the distance. Initially, she assumed it was one of the many harmless creatures she had become accustomed to during her dives. However, as the shadow drew closer, Olivia realized it was a bull shark, a species known for its unpredictable nature. The shark, perhaps curious or feeling threatened by Olivia's presence in its territory, began to circle her. Olivia's heart raced. She knew the importance of staying calm. Understanding panic could provoke the shark further. She kept her movements slow and deliberate, trying to signal that she was not a threat. Despite her efforts, the bull shark made a swift, exploratory bite its teeth grazing Olivia's arm. The minor injury was enough to jolt her into action. Remembering her training, Olivia knew she had to act quickly to deter the shark and make her escape. The moment was critical, and her response in the next few seconds would determine her fate. Olivia reached for her dive knife, a standard piece of gear she hoped she would never have to use this way. With the shark preparing for another pass, Olivia positioned herself defensively, ready to use the knife to push the shark away if it came too close gently. Her heart pounded in her chest, a mix of fear and adrenaline fueling her survival instinct. The bull shark, perhaps deterred by Olivia's defensive stance or simply losing interest, began to circle wider, its black eyes watching her cautiously. Olivia focused on the shark, her mind racing to escape this predicament. The standoff seemed to last an eternity, but only a few moments before the shark slowly began to retreat into the depths, leaving Olivia alone in the vast ocean. With the shark gone, Olivia quickly returned to the surface, her arm throbbing from the injury but her spirit undeterred. As she broke through the water's surface, gasping for air, she knew that her quick thinking and understanding of shark behavior had saved her. The boat was in sight, a beacon of safety in the open water. Olivia swam towards it, her mind replaying the encounter over and over. Though terrifying, this experience gave her a new perspective on the creatures she had dedicated her life to studying. Olivia's respect for the ocean and its inhabitants deepened, a reminder of the delicate balance between human and marine life. As Olivia clambered back onto her boat, nursing her arm, the pain was a sharp reminder of the ocean's unpredictability. The serene beauty of the Fiji Islands with their clear blue waters had always been her research playground, where she pursued her passion for understanding marine life. Today, however, it had presented her with a stark lesson on survival. Alone on the boat, Olivia caught her breath, the adrenaline slowly ebbing away. 
She assessed her injury. It was minor, but it needed attention. She cleaned the wound with her first aid kit, wrapping it securely. The encounter with the bull shark was a testament to the risks she faced in her work, which she had always acknowledged but never encountered until now. Despite the scare, Olivia's determination remained unshaken. She understood that such encounters were rare and that the bull shark's behavior was more out of curiosity than aggression. While frightening, this experience only fueled her resolve to continue her research and contribute to understanding these misunderstood creatures. The incident, however, made her more cautious. She reviewed her safety protocols, ensuring she would be better prepared for future encounters. Olivia knew the ocean was a dynamic, ever-changing environment full of surprises. It demanded respect, and she was more than willing to give it. In the days following the attack, Olivia focused on healing and reflecting on her experience. She pondered the data and observations she had collected before the encounter, eager to return to her research. Yet she knew she had to wait until she was fully healed and ready to face the ocean's depths again. Olivia's brush with the bull shark did not deter her. Instead, it deepened her appreciation for the ocean and its inhabitants. She became more involved in promoting marine conservation, advocating for the protection of shark habitats and educating others about the importance of sharks in the ocean's ecosystem. Her research took on a new dimension, focusing on marine life behavior and human interactions with these powerful creatures. Eventually, Olivia returned to the water, her spirit undaunted. She continued her work with renewed purpose and a deeper understanding of the balance between human and marine life. With all its mysteries and dangers, the ocean remained her passion, a vast blue world she was privileged to explore. Olivia's encounter with the bull shark became a defining moment in her career, a reminder of the challenges and rewards of working in marine research. It reinforced her belief in the importance of her work and the need for continued education and conservation efforts. As she dove into the waters of the Fiji Islands once more, Olivia felt a profound connection to the ocean, a bond forged through respect, understanding, and a shared sense of survival. With its endless wonders and challenges, the sea called to her and she answered, ready to continue her journey of discovery, armed with knowledge, experience, and an unbreakable will to coexist with the magnificent creatures of the deep. The sun beat down on the turquoise waters of False Bay, a coastal inlet on the southern tip of South Africa. It was July 2002, the heart of the region's infamous shark season. Sarah Blackwood, a driven young marine biologist, bobbed in the swells beside a small research vessel. Her husband, Ethan, checked a dive tank at her side, his tanned face etched with a familiar mix of focus and excitement. This stretch of coastline was a haven for great white sharks, drawn by a vast colony of Cape fur seals. Fascinating and fearsome, these predators were the reason Sarah and Ethan had dedicated their lives to marine research. The Blackwoods were determined to understand these animals better, even as the dangers became a visceral, ever-present reality. Today wasn't a typical research dive. A film crew lingered on the vessel eager to capture footage for a documentary on Sarah's work. She felt unease at the cameras, echoing the pressure to deliver something visually compelling. But the sharks, those unpredictable creatures, were the ultimate stars of this show. Ethan couldn't suppress his grin as he checked the tank, the satisfaction evident in his eyes despite the muffled quality of his voice, the regulator masking his words. Flashing her an okay signal, they descended beneath the waves together. The water was surprisingly murky, and the visibility was poor. A shiver ran down Sarah's spine. The thrill of her work mingled with a primal wariness. She knew these waters weren't just a research site. They were a hunting ground. They followed the ragged edge of a kelp forest, a favored ambush spot for great whites. Sarah scanned the gloom, her senses straining to pick up any flicker of movement. The documentary focused on the controversial use of chum in research, a messy mix of fish parts used to attract sharks. That tactic wasn't on the agenda today, but she still felt the invisible presence of the apex predators drawn to this place. Ethan pointed excitedly at a school of moonfish, shimmering like giant coins. Sarah filmed them, part of her mind still on edge. Every swirling patch of seaweed and shadow had the potential for a different encounter. It was the nature of this job, the calculated risk that came with observing sharks in their wild domain. Suddenly, a surge of adrenaline shot through her. A massive gray shape resolved itself from the watery haze. 
Ethan stiffened beside her, but the great white veered off, disappearing as quickly as it had come. Sarah let out a breath, a mix of relief and disappointment. Even in that brief glimpse, the shark's power was beautiful and utterly terrifying. The feeling of unease gnawed at Sarah. The documentary crew hoped for another encounter, a dramatic rush of the great predator that would make for riveting film. Sarah understood the appeal, but her instincts as a scientist screamed caution. Something didn't feel right. She and Ethan decided to ascend, a slow and controlled return to the surface. Just as they began, it came again. Not a fleeting glimpse this time, but the full power of the hunter unleashed. A torpedo of muscle and teeth shot from below, knocking Ethan aside. Before Sarah could react, the shark closed its massive jaws around her leg. Pain exploded like fire. The world became a blur of blood and churning water. Panic threatened to consume her. Don't fight it, don't thrash, a corner of her trained mind yelled. With disorienting clarity, she remembered the case studies. Sharks often release their victims after an initial strike, mistaking them for less desirable prey. Through a haze of pain, Sarah went limp, her body a rag doll in the shark's grasp. Her lungs screamed for air, but she held her breath. The shark thrashed, its teeth tearing into her flesh, ripping her dive suit open. In those horrific seconds, Sarah wondered if this was how it would end, a grotesque sacrifice to her fascination with the deep. The pressure lessened, and she glimpsed the massive form of the shark retreating into the murk. She was still alive. A strangled cry escaped her lips, half gasp, half sob. Then instinct took over. Sarah kicked desperately for the surface. The water around her turned crimson. She could feel the blood loss weakening her, a cold creeping into her limbs. Ethan was beside her now, eyes wide with horror and desperate resolve. Together, they fought their way upward, each second a struggle against the drag of Sarah's wounds. The world narrowed to the burning agony in her leg and the desperate need to reach air just to survive. Two hands grabbed her and hauled her over the boat's gunwale. The rough deck was a painful haven compared to the bloody waters below. Ethan was at her side instantly, his hands frantically trying to stem the blood flow. She heard the rumble of the boat's engine and felt it lurch into motion. Faces swam above her, some familiar from their crew, some from the film team suddenly cast in the roles of rescuers. Pain threatened to swallow her, but she fought it with every ragged breath. Amidst the turmoil, the steady and reassuring presence of Ethan anchored Sarah's attention. Simultaneously, a makeshift tourniquet was tightened fiercely against her thigh. The journey back to shore seemed to last hours, an agonizing cycle of drifting in and out of consciousness. With each wave that rocked the boat, fiery jolts shot through her mangled leg. Faces blurred above her. The voices quieted as if underwater. Through the haze, the desperate calls of the paramedics pierced through. They were close, they were her lifeline. Something shifted then, a spark of clarity piercing the fog of pain. It wasn't resentment towards the shark, not a flash of primal anger. Instead, a profound realization hit her, the need for understanding. These creatures were forces of nature, guided by instinct, not malice. Her chosen path studying these predators suddenly felt more important than ever. Then, as they bumped against the dock and rough hands unloaded her onto dry land, as the urgent shouts of paramedics surrounded her, the blissful wave of painkillers finally washed over her. Her struggle to stay conscious faded, but that clear thought clung to her mind. Understanding these sharks wasn't just research, it was vital. The serene beaches were already bustling with activity in the golden glow of an early morning on the Gold Coast, Queensland. Among the crowd was Lara Mitchell, a young and exceptionally talented surfer whose dedication to her sport was evident in her every move. With her sun-bleached hair and a smile as bright as the Australian sun, Lara was a well-known figure in the local surfing community. Admired for her skill on the waves and her indomitable spirit, the day promised excellent conditions for surfing, with clear skies and waves that beckoned the bravest of hearts. Lara, eager to make the most of it, paddled out into the ocean, her eyes sparkling with anticipation. Around her, other surfers shared the camaraderie that only the sea could foster, each dancing with the rolling waves. As Lara waited for the perfect wave, her focus was complete, a testament to her passion for surfing. This passion had driven her from a young age, pushing her to challenge the limits of what she could achieve on a surfboard. Today was no different. 
She was ready to take on the ocean, to carve her path across its surface. Suddenly the water around her surged as a great wave approached, a monstrous swell that promised an exhilarating ride. Lara positioned herself paddling with solid and determined strokes. She caught the wave, standing up on her board with a grace that belied the power beneath her feet. The world seemed to stand still as she rode, the wave carrying her toward the shore with unstoppable force. But in a heartbeat, the idyllic scene shattered. A dark shadow loomed beneath the water's surface, moving with a speed and purpose that sent a chill down the spine of anyone who saw it. A great white shark, one of the ocean's most formidable predators, was closing in on Lara. The attack was swift and brutal. Lara caught off guard and fought with every ounce of strength she had. The water around her turned into a churning maelstrom of confusion and fear. On shore, the alarm was raised. The morning's tranquility broken by cries of terror and the urgent sound of lifeguards springing into action. Rescue efforts were mobilized with impressive speed. Jet skis were launched into the water, cutting through the waves to reach Lara, struggling to stay afloat. The surfing community, always tight-knit in the face of danger, rallied together, their collective effort focused on saving one of their own. As the rescue team reached Lara, the shark disappeared into the ocean's depths, perhaps deterred by the commotion. Lara was pulled from the water, her condition critical but alive, a testament to her resilience and the quick response of those around her. The attack's impact on the Gold Coast surfing community was immediate and profound. Lara was not just a fellow surfer, she symbolized the passion and risk inherent in their love for the ocean. As she was rushed to the hospital, the community stood together on the beach, their hearts heavy with the reality of the danger they all faced in pursuit of their passion. The story of Lara's attack spread quickly, a stark reminder of the risks taken by those who dare to challenge the ocean's might. But even as fear and concern gripped the community, there was also a growing sense of unity and determination. They would not be deterred by the dangers of the sea. Instead, they would support one another and continue to ride the waves, driven by the same passion that had defined Lara's life. As the sun set on the Gold Coast, the surfing community gathered their thoughts with Lara as she fought for her life in the hospital. They shared stories of her bravery, love for surfing, and spirit that had always inspired them. In the face of adversity, they found strength in their shared passion a bond that the attack could not break. The story of Lara's battle for survival was just beginning, and as the night fell, a quiet resolve settled over the Gold Coast. They would stand by one of their own, ready to face the challenges ahead with the same courage and resilience that Lara had shown. The ocean had taken much from them, but it had also given them a community, a family united by their love for the waves. And together, they would navigate the uncertain waters of the future, their spirits unbroken their resolve unwavering. As dawn broke over the Gold Coast, the news of Lara Mitchell's shark attack had permeated every corner of the local and broader surfing community. Lara, lying in a hospital bed, represented a stark emblem of the risks every surfer willingly faced for the love of the sport. Yet in the wake of the attack, a palpable sense of resilience began to emanate from those same waters that had brought them all together. Lara's condition, though severe, was stabilizing. The doctors were cautiously optimistic, praising her remarkable fight to survive. Her parents, steadfast by her bedside, became conduits for the outpouring of support from the community. Surfers, many of whom had never met Lara but felt a kinship through a shared passion, sent messages of encouragement and offers of help. The local surf shops and clubs organized fundraisers to aid with her medical expenses a testament to the solidarity and communal spirit of the surfing world. The attack had ignited a fervent discussion on shark conservation versus public safety, a debate that resonated through the coastal town. While some called for measures to reduce the risk of shark encounters, others advocated for respecting and preserving the natural oceanic ecosystem. Amidst this, a collective initiative emerged, led by seasoned surfers and marine biologists, to educate the community on coexisting safely with marine life. Workshops on shark behavior, safety protocols while surfing, and the significance of sharks to the marine ecosystem were organized, bridging the gap between fear and understanding. Throughout her recovery, Lara symbolizes the dialogue between humanity and nature. Her story, filled with passion, risk, and resilience, underscored the complex relationship surfers had with the sea.
a mixture of reverence, love, and caution. The community's response to her ordeal reflected a more profound acknowledgement of the ocean's unpredictability and a renewed commitment to navigate its waves with respect and wisdom. Months passed and Lara's recovery surpassed expectations. Her spirit, undimmed by the attack, fueled her rehabilitation. The physical scars were a testament to her survival. Still, her unquenched desire to return to the ocean truly inspired her. Lara's first visit back to the beach was a momentous occasion. The surfing community gathered not just to witness her return, but to celebrate their collective resilience and unity in the face of adversity. Ultimately, Lara Mitchell's encounter with a great white shark became a narrative of hope, a reminder of the indomitable human spirit, and a celebration of the surfing community's solidarity. As she rode the waves again, Lara wasn't just surfing. She embodied the essence of resilience, inspiring countless others to face their battles with the same courage and heart. With all its beauty and dangers, the ocean remained an integral part of their lives, a constant reminder of the strength found in passion, the importance of community, and the unyielding power of the human spirit to overcome. Jack's love for the ocean began long before he could even walk. Born and raised in the coastal town of Kaikoura, New Zealand, he was surrounded by the salty sea air and the rhythmic crash of the waves from a young age. His family, a tight-knit group of adventurers and nature enthusiasts, instilled in him a deep appreciation for the natural world and a thirst for exploration. Growing up, Jack spent countless hours exploring the rocky shores and sandy beaches that bordered his hometown. His parents, avid divers themselves, introduced him to the wonders of the underwater world at an early age teaching him to snorkel and dive in the crystal-clear waters of the Pacific Ocean. Jack found his true passion here among the vibrant coral reefs and teeming schools of fish. As he grew older, Jack's thirst for adventure only intensified. He devoured books and documentaries about marine life, immersing himself in the fascinating world of sharks, whales, and dolphins that inhabited the waters off the coast of New Zealand. But it wasn't until his teenage years that Jack's true calling revealed itself. At age 16, Jack embarked on his first scuba diving excursion, a life-changing experience that would set him on a path of discovery and adventure. Under the guidance of experienced instructors, he learned the ins and outs of diving, mastering the art of buoyancy control, navigation, and underwater communication. But it wasn't just the technical aspects of diving that captivated Jack, the sense of freedom and exhilaration that came with exploring the ocean's depths a vast and untamed wilderness teeming with life and mystery. From that moment on, he knew he was destined to become a diver, to explore the far reaches of the underwater world and uncover its hidden secrets. With a newfound sense of purpose, Jack devoted himself to his training, spending hours honing his skills and perfecting his technique. He earned his scuba certification and embarked on countless diving expeditions, from the colorful coral reefs of the South Pacific to the icy depths of the Southern Ocean. Each dive brought new challenges and discoveries, fueling Jack's passion for exploration and pushing him to new heights of daring. But despite his many adventures, one experience had always eluded Jack. Cage diving with great white sharks. It was a dream he had harbored since childhood, a chance to come face to face with one of the ocean's most fearsome predators in its natural habitat. And now, with his skills and experience as a diver, Jack was ready to make that dream a reality. Jack was on a trip to Australia when the opportunity presented itself. He had always known that great white sharks frequently visit the ocean in Australia in search of food. He assembled a small team of experienced divers and marine biologists determined to take advantage of this opportunity. Jack didn't have much time to spend in Australia, so the preparations were made in just a day and they were all set for the expedition by the next day. But despite that, he felt a surge of excitement coursing through his veins whenever his mind thought of the expedition. He knew the coming hours would be filled with uncertainty and danger, but he was undeterred. For Jack, the thrill of exploration was worth any risk. The crew drove the vessel to a length before Jack was lowered into the water. He was in an iron cage with his diving device plugged into his back. Jack's heart raced with excitement as he descended into the ocean's depths, surrounded by the vast expanse of cerulean blue. Inside the sturdy shark cage, he felt a sense of exhilaration mingled with anticipation, 
eager to come face to face with the ocean's most formidable predator, the great white shark. Despite being a seasoned diver and adventurer, this was his ultimate thrill, a chance to witness these apex predators' raw power and majesty up close. Jack's senses heightened as the cage descended deeper into the abyss, and every shadow and movement beneath the waves captured his attention. He knew the risks involved in diving with sharks, but the allure of the unknown drew him further into the depths, his curiosity driving him forward with unwavering determination. A bait consisting of meat coated in blood was suspended in the water. Jack waited with bated breath, his eyes scanning the surrounding waters for any sign of movement. Minutes stretched into eternity as he watched and waited, the anticipation building with each passing moment, and then it happened. A shadow emerged from the depths, sleek and powerful, its form unmistakable even from a distance. Jack's heart skipped a beat as he realized the moment he had been waiting for was finally at hand. The great white shark, the ocean's apex predator, had arrived. With a surge of adrenaline, Jack adjusted his camera settings, eager to capture every moment of the encounter. But as he focused his lens on the approaching shark, his excitement turned to horror. The massive predator lurched forward with lightning speed, its jaws snapping shut on the bait with deadly precision. Jack thought, as you also will, that the shark had got the meat and everything would go well. But in its eagerness to claim its prize, the great white shark overshot its mark, crashing headlong into the sturdy metal bars of the cage. The impact sent shockwaves reverberating through the water, jolting Jack from his reverie and filling him with dread. Jack's heart raced with growing terror as the cage shuddered under the force of the collision. The great white shark's head now loomed within the confined space, its menacing presence sending chills down his spine. With a throbbing head injury from the impact, panic surged through him as he watched the predator thrash and lunge, its mighty jaws mere inches away. In the dim light filtering through the water, Jack could see his blood clouding the surroundings, a grim reminder of his vulnerability. Every movement seemed to draw the shark closer, its senses undoubtedly heightened by the scent of fresh blood. Desperation clawed at Jack's mind as he searched for a way to escape the imminent danger. With each passing moment, the confines of the cage felt more like a prison, trapping him with an apex predator. Fear and adrenaline coursed through his veins, heightening his senses as he braced himself for the inevitable confrontation. In the ocean's depths, Jack faced a harrowing battle for survival against nature's most formidable predator, with each heartbeat echoing the ticking clock of his fate. Desperation clawed at Jack's mind as he searched for a way to escape the metal jaws of his underwater prison. With each passing moment, the shark grew more agitated, its primal instincts driving it to seek freedom at any cost. Jack knew he had to act fast if he had any hope of survival. Then he remembered he had entered the cage through a door, and luckily enough it was at his back, not the side the shark had its head in. With that, he unlatched the door exited it swiftly and swam upward with his might. He didn't even look back at the cage or the shark. That was because he could hear the muffled thrashing of the great white shark behind him, its attempts to break free grow more frantic by the second. As he breached the water, gasping for air, Jack was greeted by the blinding light of the sun and the safety of the boat waiting above. With trembling limbs, he clambered aboard, his heart still racing with the adrenaline of his harrowing escape. As he collapsed onto the deck, surrounded by the concerned faces of his fellow divers, Jack couldn't help but marvel at the sheer power and unpredictability of the ocean. He had come face to face with the jaws of death and emerged victorious, a survivor of the depths of the sea. But as he lay there, battered and bruised from the sudden slam, Jack knew that the memory of his encounter with the great white shark would stay with him forever. A reminder of the fragility of life, and the indomitable spirit of survival that dwelled within him. And though he would continue to seek adventure in the ocean's depths, he would always approach it with a newfound respect for the creatures that called it home. The sun blazed a relentless path across the water, transforming the stretch of ocean off Western Australia's Ningaloo Reef into a shimmering expanse. It was a long weekend in 2002, and a small boat bobbed amidst the blue, carrying four friends on a shared adventure. There was Alex, a graphic designer weighed down by his city life and a nagging mortgage. Beside him stood Ben, a mechanic whose hands were stained with grease and whose easy smile hid a streak of cynicism. 
Ryan, a boisterous salesman with a joke for every occasion, brought an undeniable energy to their outing. The quietest among them was Thomas, Alex's cousin. A marine biologist by trade, he moved through life with an observant eye and an almost unsettling calm. While the others joked and bickered, Thomas often looked down at the clear water, his mind likely filled with facts about the creatures swimming below the surface. Ningaloo Reef was renowned for its diverse marine life, a kaleidoscope of fish, corals, and the occasional majestic whale shark. But Thomas's fascination and the source of his occasional warnings centered on the region's less welcome visitors. Great white sharks patrol these waters, apex predators that demanded respect and instilled a healthy dose of fear. The thought of encountering one sent a shiver through the men, even as they secretly hoped to glimpse a fin cutting through the waves. The morning passed in a pleasant rhythm. Laughter rang out with each fish caught. Stories from their lives back on land intermingled with excited shouts and bursts of profanity from Ben whenever a line got tangled. Ryan, ever the opportunist, hooked into something monstrous around noon, and the ensuing struggle drew whoops and cheers from the others. When they finally hauled their prize on board, a giant shimmering tuna, spirits soared. Visions of a beachside feast filled their heads. Their idyllic day took a dark turn when the engine sputtered into silence. Ben, their resident mechanic, bent over the tangled machinery, his usual confidence slowly eroding. Alex, no stranger to deadlines and unforeseen problems, felt unease settle in his stomach. The ocean's vastness surrounded them, a reminder of their vulnerability. Suddenly, Thomas pointed towards the reef, his voice strained. A massive fin broke the surface, carving a path straight towards their boat. Ryan's laughter ceased. Ben froze mid-repair and Alex's heart hammered against his ribs. The predator circled a silent promise of danger. They were no longer guests in its domain but potential prey. The long shadows of the setting sun made the water seem even more ominous, and the last threads of their earlier cheer dissolved into a tense, unspoken fear. The great white struck without warning. Ryan, the closest to the railing, had been struggling with the outboard motor when the monstrous fish erupted from the depths. The boat lurched violently as the shark breached all teeth and thrashing power. Ryan screamed, a sound cut brutally short as he disappeared in a spray of crimson and churned water. Ben and Alex, paralyzed with shock, scrambled for life jackets. Their hands shook uncontrollably. Thomas, though, seemed to snap out of his frozen state. He grabbed the radio, barking a desperate mayday into the crackling device. His voice echoed with a terrified urgency that mirrored the pounding of Alex's heart. The ocean, moments ago familiar territory, was now a scene of pure horror. The water churned with an almost oily sheen. A single tooth the size of a man's hand bobbed in the spreading stain, a gruesome trophy from the attack. Ben collapsed, great heaving sobs racking his body. His usual mask of toughness was shattered, leaving only a broken man. Alex could only stare, his mind unable to process the sheer brutality of Ryan's end. Only minutes ago they'd been laughing. Now there was only silence and the lingering smell of blood. Thomas, the man of facts, was now a man of action. He scanned the waters frantically, searching for any sign of Ryan, of the shark. There was nothing. The realization hit them like a wave. They were adrift, with no engine, witness to an unseen predator lurking beneath the surface. Alex took up the grisly task of patching up the holes in their boat, remnants of the shark's frenzied assault. His hands trembled but a tiny sliver of determination pushed back against the fear with each progress. They had to stay afloat, and they hoped rescue was on the way. Darkness fell with startling swiftness, plunging them into a terrifying new reality. No longer a playground, the ocean became a realm of shadows and unseen terrors. But they were not alone. Strange, glowing shapes materialized beneath the boat, bioluminescent plankton, disturbed by their frantic movements, painting the water with an eerie light. It was as beautiful as it was terrifying, a reminder of the sea's wonders and horrors in its depths. A desperate plan formed in Alex's mind as the night wore on. Taking a length of rope, he tied a life jacket to one end and lowered it into the water, the glowing plankton swirling around it. It was a long shot, a distraction tactic. The shark could be drawn to the movement and leave their battered boat alone. The hours dragged by and sleep was impossible. Ben mumbled incoherently, lost in his grief. Thomas stared out at the vastness, his jaw clenched. 
and Alex watched his makeshift lure, hoping against hope that it was buying them time. With the first hints of dawn, a cry went up, not of terror, but of relief. On the horizon, the unmistakable shape of a search plane cut through the morning sky. Tears welled in their eyes as the aircraft grew closer, the roar of its engines promising salvation. In the end, they were found, battered, dehydrated, and forever scarred by their ordeal. They had survived the night, the predator, and their greatest fears. The price they paid was high. They would carry the memory of Ryan, the glistening tooth, and the sheer terror of being adrift at the mercy of the sea for the rest of their lives. Sofia Martinez, a seasoned professional diver with a spirit of adventure, embarked on a journey to explore one of the most mesmerizing underwater locations in the world, the Blue Hole in the Bahamas. Known for its vast and enigmatic depths, the Blue Hole attracted divers from all corners of the globe, eager to unravel its secrets. With her years of diving experience and numerous explorations, Sophia was drawn to the Blue Hole's promise of undiscovered wonders. On a clear and sunny day, with the sun reflecting off the tranquil turquoise waters, Sophia began her descent. Equipped with her diving gear, a reliable flashlight, and a heart full of courage, she plunged into the cool embrace of the ocean. As she dove more profoundly, the sunlight faded, giving way to the serene darkness of the underwater world. The Blue Hole's walls were adorned with a kaleidoscope of marine life, from colorful corals to schools of fish that danced in the water's gentle currents. Sophia was in awe of the beauty that surrounded her. She moved gracefully through the water, her eyes wide with wonder and her mind alert. She aimed to explore one of the Blue Hole's lesser-known caves, a spot she had researched and prepared for meticulously. As she approached the cave's entrance, her excitement grew. She lived for this, the thrill of discovery and the unknown challenge. However, an unexpected shadow loomed in the distance as Sophia navigated through the cave's narrow passageways. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized she was not alone. A tiger shark, one of the ocean's most formidable predators, had silently entered the cave, blocking her only way out. Sophia's training had prepared her for many situations, but being trapped in an underwater cave with a tiger shark was a scenario she had never imagined. Panic began, but Sophia knew she had to remain calm. Her survival depended on her ability to think clearly and act decisively. The shark, displaying a curious yet cautious demeanor, circled the entrance of the cave, its eyes fixed on Sophia. She understood that the shark was as much a part of this environment as she was, but she also knew she needed to find a way to escape safely. Sophia assessed her surroundings, looking for anything to help her in this dire situation. The cave was her temporary sanctuary, but it could quickly become her tomb if she didn't act. Her mind raced, trying to devise a plan that would allow her to outsmart the predator and escape back to the open ocean. As she pondered her next move, Sophia's thoughts were clear. She would need all her resourcefulness and courage to navigate this challenge. The peaceful exploration she had embarked on had turned into a test of survival. With the tiger shark patrolling the entrance and the weight of her predicament bearing down on her, Sophia prepared to use every skill and bit of knowledge she had acquired over the years. She was determined to make her escape, relying on her quick thinking and deep respect for the marine world. This was the moment Sophia's actual test began. With the tiger shark circling the underwater cave entrance, Sophia knew her options were limited but clear. Her priority was ensuring her safety without harming the magnificent creature before her. Drawing from her extensive knowledge of marine behavior, Sophia began to formulate a plan to distract the shark and make her escape. She remembered reading about divers using tools and the environment to redirect a shark's attention. Looking around, Sophia spotted a cluster of small rocks and sediment at the bottom of the cave. Moving slowly to avoid startling the shark, she collected a handful of stones, then positioned herself to throw them away from herself and the cave's entrance, hoping the disturbance would pique the shark's curiosity. With a steady hand, Sophia tossed the rocks to the far side of the cave. As hoped, the shark turned its attention towards the source of the disturbance, giving Sophia a narrow window of opportunity. She knew she had to act swiftly. Taking a deep breath, she used the moment to carefully swim towards the entrance, staying as close to the cave walls as possible to make herself less visible. As she neared the exit, Sophia's heart raced. The shark, noticing the movement, started to turn back towards her. 
In that critical moment, Sophia recalled another piece of advice. Sharks, curious by nature, could sometimes be deterred by confrontation. Gathering her courage, Sophia turned to face the shark, making herself as big as possible and using her flashlight to disorient it briefly. The shark paused, seemingly confused by Sophia's bold action. It was a tense standoff, with the shark a mere few meters away, its eyes reflecting a mix of curiosity and caution. Maintaining eye contact, Sophia slowly backed away from the shark, moving towards the open water. Finally, the shark turned away, losing interest in Sophia and swimming into the cave's darkness. With her heart still pounding, Sophia seized the moment to make her escape, swimming quickly and efficiently towards the surface. Once she broke through the water's surface, Sophia gasped for air, the sun's rays warming her face. She had done it. She had faced one of the most feared predators in the ocean and lived to tell the tale. But more than that, Sophia had proven to herself that her resourcefulness, courage and respect for the marine world were her most significant assets. Back on her boat, Sophia reflected on her harrowing experience. It was a stark reminder of the inherent dangers of diving into the unknown depths of the ocean. Yet it also reaffirmed her love and respect for the sea and its inhabitants. She knew that this encounter would not deter her from future dives, but would instead serve as a valuable lesson in preparation, respect, and the importance of understanding the creatures of the deep. Sophia's adventure in the Blue Hole was more than just a close call with a tiger shark. It was a testament to human resilience and the profound connection between humans and the natural world. Her story, a thrilling tale of survival and wisdom, would inspire divers and ocean enthusiasts alike to approach the ocean with awe, respect, and an unyielding spirit of adventure.